Hi, everybody. <laughs> How's it going? Sorry, we're a little, a little bit late, a little 10 minutes late tonight. It's all right, though. It's all right. Really? I mean, I mean, we, we, we tend to we tend to like just hang out and chat. Yeah. Where you all can't hear us. I feel like it's really yeah, loud. We just get, tonight. You know, what's the worst? What's that? What's the what is the worst? The worst. I mean, this is super first world problems, but okay. the worst is when shrink wrap gets stuck to the spine of a game and like then you find it a year later and it's just like a little piece no 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 like does it ever happen to you where like like and i could tell it when i was opening it i was opening my switch copy of streets of rage 4 because i was putting it in this arrangement for the uh the episode thumbnail that i was getting ready to shoot yeah and it, it doesn't happen very often, but it's happened like it happens on Switch games. It happens on PS4 games. It happened, it's happened on Xbox games. It's happened on all the current platforms for me. Um, like, it, it, it's just like, I mean, you can get the shrink wrap off the whole thing. And then it's just like, it's stuck to the spine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And I know, I know like, what you mean. I don't think, like, I think I've tried taking like Goo Gone or something to it. And... Mm-hmm. It's just from the heat of getting it to shrink, to getting the wrap to shrink. I don't know, but I think it's that way from the factory. I don't think it's because it's been in there a long time mm. or anything. Like just it, it just it sticks to it, and it's like you cannot clean it up. That's I I, I never really thought about it, but I do run into that quite often. And I and I, I probably mean, have I thought like, why does that often, happen? Often enough to be annoying. Yeah. Like my Streets of Rage four looked nicer before I opened it, because <laughs> like, now the spine has just a little bit of yuck on it, and you just you just can't get it off. There was a a one dollar super chat from Yo 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 Yoshio uh, that yeah. was not in the super chat, but popped off. Uh, it was uh, it, it was on screen and it went away. It said, um, it, I, I have it here. It says it says. Uh, Hey guys, it's been a while. Sorry, I've not been here to spread my pro emulation propaganda. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's been, it's been a little while. You're you're always in the always in the digital foundry streams. That's where I, John gets a little worried if you aren't if you aren't there in the <laughs> in the digital foundry streams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do recall seeing him there. Uh, you gotta let me know if that the audio levels are. I mean, they look a little hot from here, but I'm not sure if they're. If they're good for everybody oh, else or not, let me know. Was complaining? No, no, I'm just, I'm just looking at my meters, and it's looking a little hot. But mm. uh, you have a good, you have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was, it was actually just, you know, I went to my parents' house just for the day. You know, normally I stay a couple of nights, uh, but me and Sandy just went up for the day. Mm-hmm. That never, never did that. At least not with. Sandy, uh, you know, since I've had Sandy, never like went up there and back in the same day. So that uh, was probably annoying for, for her. Yeah, but, you know, uh, Nellie had to do that but, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. How'd yeah. she do at Thanksgiving? Uh, I mean, we went to uh, uh, my wife's parents' house and like they don't have any animals. So she had to kind of stay out on the, on the enclosed porch for most of the mm-hmm. time. Uh, she did pretty good. She didn't, yeah. you know, didn't have any accidents. Was good. Did pretty good. Um, but but Sandy did pretty good going. Oh yeah, yeah. She, uh, you know, normally when I'm at my parents' house, you know, usually we're there for you know two days or so at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got a baby gate here in the laundry room, and that's where, you know, I put Sandy if you know someone's coming to work on the house or, you know, that's where she sleeps and stuff. And, you know, my parents also got the same baby gate to put at the stairs when she's there, just so, you know, we know where she is. And, you know, if people need to be going in out the front door or something, you know, you, you know, you can just keep her downstairs. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't have that up, you know, cause she, we weren't even staying overnight. So she was, you know, free roam of the house. And she was a little fussy while uh, while we were up there uh, eating eating Thanksgiving uh, 
dinner, <laughs> you know, <laughs> being uh, being left out. I had I did have a bone on my plate that had you know probably some little bits of we we just had chicken. We didn't have a have a proper turkey, uh, you know. But I had uh, you know had had some bits of chicken still on it and some 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 gravy and some mashed potatoes on. It. I just I you know I didn't want to give her the whole bone because you know it's not. It's not supposed to be good to give dogs actual bones because they can like yeah. splinter and stuff. You know? Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Um, but you know, I just held on to it and and let her let her lick it off real good, and then she was she was real happy, but she <laughs> she wasn't taking. She 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 she, she, she kind of go, oh, I want to take the whole thing, but she lick she licked it clean. So <laughs> she got a little something. She got a little something out. I, I see someone mentioned my my flannel shirt. I gotta say that they're actually flannel pajamas. I decided that from this every Sunday stream from this this point from now until uh, until the end of the year, yeah. it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be pajama time during during the the streams. <laughs> and these these are like every year. Like my wife has this thing where we get like you know like you know like. It's 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 so basic sounding when I say it out loud, but they're like Christmas pajamas. <laughs> it's 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 I mean, su- it's such like it's such a, like a basic thing, but well, whatever. Like, you know? uh, <laughs> I, I th- this is like every year since I can remember. Like there, I, I get I get Christmas slippers, slippers, yeah, or moccasins. You know, one yeah. or the other. It's like I, I do not remember a year where, you know, that didn't happen. And, and it's like always been, you know, it, it, it always was, you know, Santa <laughs> left it. And so they were always like in front, like just outside my bedroom. <laughs> and like to this day, that's still where they are. His, his really? new pair of slippers right outside my bedroom. That's and cool. These, I got to say, in all the years, these are deer foams. These are the best slippers santa ever bought and and santa asked me again can you can you read me the brand and size of those slippers that you got last year (laughs) (laughs) santa has already asked for that this year so (laughs) so when i when i say like christmas pajamas like i can't really show but i mean like my pants are are the same are the same color are the same pattern so i'm just just relaxing you know when you said I, I can't really show my 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 uh, my mind immediately went to like is it have like an old timey like butt flap? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just I had to lift up my leg. I mean, I could stand up and probably show everybody, but you know, this is so. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it comfy tonight. Uh, anything good for Black Friday? I, I, like um, the, the the whole idea of Black Friday. Is so is so like it, it makes no sense anymore because like like it's like an entire week now like everything that I, I, is available I'm, discounted is like available like you the know, week I, before. I I do have to say, um, <clears throat> uh, I mean th- there were more deals like you know Thanksgiving onward. Yeah. Um, then there was, you know, even though like lots of places were like Black Friday prices guaranteed like a month ago. Yeah. Um, I just picked up. I got um, uh, uh, Walmart or well, Walmart had it at first, and then I I <laughs> I I sent it to my mom. I said, "Oh, hey, you know, maybe Christmas present idea." You know, I, I was there was a couple of things. I was like, it was a good price. I like was like, hey. Well, she got one thing. She didn't get Monster Hunter Rise, though, which was $25. I was like, I wasn't planning to get this. Because what I was planning to do, I actually asked for Monster Hunter Stories 2 for Christmas, and that was all I was going to ask for. Then when I saw Monster Hunter Rise was $25, I'm like, I'm going to ask that. Because I was like, you know what? Like, I I really liked the demo for Monster Hunter Rise, but I'm still, like, kind of scared to, like, get into the series. Because I... I didn't really get into world very much and I didn't like some of the demos of the series I'd played before then, but I really liked the demo for rise. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's, 
there are a lot of gameplay improvements that kind of kind of intrigued me. <laughs> but then I, 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 I almost bought it when it came out, but I was like, no, no, no. And Switch games like rarely get down to like $25, but so that surprised me. But I was thinking like, oh, you know what? I, I, Monster Hunter Stories 2, I think that'd be a good idea to ask for Christmas because like I thought, uh, you know, like maybe I would feel more invested and ready to get into the world of monster hunter you know after playing through one of the know, stories regular old rpg that's set yeah. in yeah you know like that that might that might be a good way to bring me in but then when i saw rise was 25 well anyway my my you know my mom was too late to get that that monster hunter rise deal so when i saw it come up on gamestop i just bought it myself yeah um uh and so it was for store pickup at the mall, which I haven't been the mall in like, I couldn't tell you how long mm -hmm. I've been in some stores. Like there's a, there's a, in fact, I got lunch there. I picked up lunch there. There's a, there's a Chinese place in the mall, but you can enter it from the outside. Yeah. So, but actually going into the mall where GameStop was, I hadn't been there in forever, but anyway, so I picked that up today. I mean, I could have picked it up Friday, but I picked it up today. And, uh, so anyway, I got I got that, but then I, I did get several things on Amazon. I got um, I I didn't buy anything that was more than almost everything was twenty five dollars, but some one or two might have been thirty. I got uh, Persona Five Strikers, mm -hmm. uh, Scarlet Nexus, which I I played the demo of that. I, uh, I have no idea what that is. It well you know, it was at one of the. Uh, Last year, before the new consoles came out, uh, it was at either uh, one of those, you know, PlayStation 5 or Xbox events over the summer leading up to launch. Uh, and I remember it was, bit like, it was like the first, like, Japanese-looking game of the show, and you were like, oh, this actually looks pretty good. It's like, uh, it's, it's like, um, uh, it's like, like some, it's, it's just a Japanese action third hmm. character action game yeah but like you have like psychokinetic powers oh. it's it seems, it seems pretty good um uh mass effect legendary edition hades that was twenty dollars yeah i got i got hades like when it was twenty dollars uh um, like a couple weeks ago but i have guardians of the galaxy yeah. which is you know i mean you know, <laughs> apparently surprisingly amazingly good no that one expected no one saw it coming and it's like already like it was it was like twenty five dollars. I, I was like, like okay, I'll get how that. Is it already twenty five dollars when people were saying it's like, oh, actually it's a game of the year contender. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I think that people probably felt the same way as we did, is that we were like when it was revealed during E three, we were like actively disinterested. Yeah. Like and that doesn't happen very often, but you know, you see something it's like, oh that's I'm can we move on? This is like this is really boring. Uh, but we were really disinterested. And then, you know, the overall word of mouth has been incredible on it. And, you know, for $25, I, I, I'll i take a chance. You know, I probably, probably end up loving it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, I, I kind of didn't think I was really going to buy much of anything this year. But then, you know, I probably think that every year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really didn't want to buy anything because I just bought all those Xbox games for, for the backwards compatibility stuff. But. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I kind of mentioned this last week. I, I'm like kind of terrified of like trying to, to do this, but I like my kids really want switch lights. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I guess I can try to like make that happen. So and like, they're just like sold out everywhere. I haven't seen them in stock at all. Like I just, like not even just like things saying like hey this place has switch lights I just like don't think they're available I thought they were maybe saving them until like yeah you know after yeah, after Thanksgiving I think about, like you know I you know I I, I tune into the old Warrior sixty four yeah oh yeah you know uh, that 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 that's like that's like probably like like. 60% of my Twitter use for the year is looking at Warrior sixty four yeah. around Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. I, and, I'm just hoping uh, that like they make more of these things, and, like nothing about switch lights. 
Well, yeah, because like he, I, I did, you know, you would see throughout, you know, Switch OLED supposed to be in stock at Walmart soon, you know, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X at Target, you know, whatever. You're right. I, I don't remember it saying Switch Lite anywhere, which is, I mean, you would think that would be a huge seller for, for Christmas. Have yeah, well, I'm into, sure it is. Like, I have looked into, you know, like, any of your local stores if they have any good condition used ones? Um, I haven't really... Look, I haven't got, gotten to that point yet, but you know, like I'll, I'll see, uh, I'll, I'll check GameStop. Like I haven't gone in there to specifically look for them. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not, I'm not desperate yet. This is my first time, like really, you know, they, that they want something and like, I mean, I even didn't say that, that they get it, but I, they've just like accepted that that's what, what they're going to get. They've just decided that like, that's, it's going to happen. <laughs> So maybe maybe I need to like give him a little dose of reality and just not get it for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that would that would be reality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. There was try. another uh, Yo Yo Yoshi. Oh, there was. Yes, I, I meant to read that earlier. Uh, Three dollars from Yo Yo Yoshio saying uh, I've been ki- kind of tight on money developing my own video game, but glad to be here. On that note, I want to get an NES and looking at a Famicom top loader with AB, AV multi out. Uh, I'm only interested in composite. Is one worth getting with an EverDrive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You say only interested in composite? Yeah. Well, yeah. then, oh, yeah. I mean, you get, I mean, that, that would be like ideal, honestly. The only downside to the AV Famicom is that the uh, way it's pre configured for mixing in uh expansion audio is a bit out of balance but you may be able to rebalance it with the everdrive yeah you know if you're if you're playing a game on the everdrive that has expansion audio i you that it does have you know uh settings in the everdrive for how high like the cartridge volume level should be so you should be able to basically fix that yeah um so yeah with an everdrive and av famicom and composite out i mean that's that's a winner right there. <laughs> All right, uh, there was a, there was another donation, but I'm going to start the game because I know that we're yeah, like for, we're like. like yeah, I'll, I'll I'll read this one while you while you switch it over from uh, ninety demons. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of demons. Yeah, made, made, me. made me think of what was that game on that was like one of the first Xbox 360 games shown? Ninety nine nights. Yeah, I, I think I have that. I have that. I think. I uh, um, maybe I might have the second one. It was like one of those, like, um, I don't know if it really plays like Musso, but it's like, you know, tons right. and tons of enemies on screen at once. Uh, uh, Say, uh, I bought Switch Lite from uh, Facebook for $70. Had broken thumbstick and can't read games. <laughs> Called Nintendo. They say it's still covered and fixed it for free. Wow. That's, that's a heck of a now deal. That, that that, was that's a, that that's was the a way to do it. That's you took there, but uh, that's uh, paid off big. Yeah, I remember, you know, I, I used to have, this hasn't happened to me, and I, I can't tell you how long it's been since I got a, um, since I ended up with a dead pixel. Who do, who do you and, want me to be? Well, you want first, me to be? first of all, the, the game audio is a little loud for me. Okay. I think it's loud overall. The stream keeps on freezing. So I guess I should give a little background on this game for people that, that might not know. Uh, let me just, I can pause it here. It's a little loud for me. Is it? All right, I can. Yeah. I, I, I mean, old games are often quite loud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I turned it down now. So I assume everything is 4.3. That's why you're on the CRT. Uh, yes. Uh, so movie. the history behind this game. So this, this game was developed, like, started development in 1992. And it was... Uh, by the team at Weststone, you know, the team behind the Wonder Boy series. And they were working on this arcade game on, I mean, on the uh, on Sega arcade hardware. And this is like right around the time that Street Fighter 2 was getting all crazy. And this, it did, they did a location test of this, and it did not go over well. So they, they canceled the game. So it's kind of been this long lost game until, I don't know, somebody found some parts of it a, a few years ago and uh and steve snake 
has been rebuilding it. And oh, uh, this is Steve Snake. Huh? Yeah, Steve Snake and uh, Rattalaika Games, and this is a uh, you know it's published by uh, Inin uh, Games, and uh, uh, there's a physical copy coming from uh, Strictly Limited. I think they took pre-orders for for the physical copy like so long ago. This is, Strictly Limited is like way behind on everything. Like it's like, I mean, that's I'm sure that anybody has bought anything from them is, is quite aware of the, uh, the backlog. And a little while. I mean, I've just, most of the things they've been doing lately that have interested me have also gotten wider retail releases, which I think this is too, at least in Asia. I'm yeah, sure exactly. I mean, that's what's happening. A lot of the stuff that Strictly Limited is doing, ININ is just publishing themselves also. I mean, like, there's people still waiting on the uh, limited edition of of Asha and Monster World. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's just that's just crazy to me. That was like yeah. over a year ago they took orders for that. I mean, if if there's if there's not going to be a retail a Western retail release, I'll just like get this on Amazon Japan or Play Asia or whatever because I've yeah. seen it, I've seen it listed on Play Asia. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'll do too. But yeah, I mean, like I, I feel like how far behind Strictly Limited is. This is a is. review code that you got right now. What's that? This is a review code that you yes, have yes. Right uh, so I N I N like sent out some emails like and said, you know, we got review codes for for Clockwork Aquario. I is like, is anybody interested? I was like immediately. I was like, yes. Uh, the game isn't even out in the U.S. until December fourteenth. Oh, uh, okay. it's like I think it comes out on Tuesday. In Europe, though, this I mean, I, I i can't see the full menu, but this menu looks like it might be a lot like oh, uh, the it, Monster World 4 menu, yep. or like almost exactly. It, it, it's all within that same emulator, uh, yeah. or that so same interface. You, oh. So, did you you like set up like the scaling and stuff? Is it pretty good scaling? Yeah, so there there is scaling. So, there's no custom controls in this, though, which is relevant to. <laughs> Like the video that we've been you working on. Some controls, but but you told me you were playing with. But I'm playing with the uh, with the Genesis three button. So how are you doing that if there's no custom controls? Uh, because it, it assigns attack to Y and A and jump to B. It's only a two button game, so you just use y, B and A in here. Well, that's perfect. Although I prefer C and B, I, I can. I can live with B and A. Well, I prefer B and A, but like, I feel like I, on Nintendo controllers, there's all, really only, I mean, you can put a jump on a for, you know, a super Nintendo layout, but you ever, you prefer B, but on, on Sega, like to me, like C and B are pretty, neither is weird. Right. But I do prefer B just because, like, jump is your main function. Yeah. And I feel like you want that in the middle, like on a GameCube controller. That's, you know, that's See, the whole logic behind the GameCube controller is you have this one big button in the middle that you do your most common action on. And then you can move your thumb very quickly to the other directions. And so that's why B makes sense to me for Genesis Jump. But Well, it has, like, the really good... CRT filters that I liked in the monster world, which is okay. cool, but it doesn't have any button uh, remapping. Uh, you know, it has a display, works, works PAR, full kit. screen, and the pixel perfect. But the one to one is is interpolated. At least it was in the other one, or in, in monster world. Yeah, it's interesting the attack is on Y and A because they did the same thing with uh, Shantae. Mm. They put uh, attack is on Y and A, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to. You, know, you want A, you want A to be well, jump. NES controller in Shante, but they put uh, the select button functions are now on X. Yeah. So I kind of like and the robot gush, but I'm gonna be Huck Londo first. The main character. Huck Londo. Huck Londo. I love that name. That is a. a is definitely the best name of the bunch there. <laughs> yeah, Huck El Londo. El Moon. And, and I mean, they're, they're pretty Gush. good. They're pretty good names, but Huck Londo, like that's a winner. So I'm playing on easy mode. You get nine continues to beat the game. 
you know, it's a, so what's kind of nice of it being an arcade game, they, they didn't make us so you can just feed it credits like like so often happens. So they adapted it for a home uh, to be a home game, basically. Yeah. You know, easy mode has nine continues, uh, normal has five, and hard has three. So I'm just going to try easy, see if, if I can do it. I you mean, need to scale the picture down a little bit. Is, is there a bit being cut off or not? Oh, uh, whoops. Accidentally. Uh, it, let me know if the music is going to like the sound. Sorry. Let me, I can, I can make this a little smaller if you want to. No, it's like not. Nah, it's... Oh, no. It's not cutting off that much than normal. No, it's not. It's not really. Okay. Uh, while you're while you're sitting there, um, you want to uh, uh, check that Yo Yo Yoshio? Oh yes. Uh, I don't know, my timer to run out. Oh, Dead One One Three is saying it's too loud. Still, the game is too loud. I think the game is just real loud. But I, I, uh, it's it's loud here too. So there's one dollar from Yo Yoshio. Thank you. Saying I uh, do you think there's room for N64, PS1, 90s, PC, 3D accelerated graphics in indie games like uh, how pixel art is. My game is taking heavy inspiration from the look of Mega Man Legends, really trying to mm. look like a mid to late 90s 3D game. I absolutely think there is. There's definitely yeah, there's I definitely mean, a thirst for that. Yes, I mean there, there's already developers doing some things like that. You know, there's some like some horror games that I haven't played, but uh, you know, a, a couple of games that are in the episode um, uh, that we're working on. Uh, you know, playing playing these uh, Switch games with the Switch Online controllers. Um, uh, what, some of the games I'm looking at are from this developer called Siatro. That it's it's S I A T R O, um, and uh, like McBat sixty four and Tori three D and Tori two. Uh, and they're, they're they're you know fun little things. I mean, there's not a lot going on in McBat sixty four, but it's 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 visually very very fun. Uh, Tori, I haven't played through them yet, but they they actually seem really fun. They're just like good, simple, just like you know, running around action games. Um, yeah, there, there's people kind of kind of going for that vibe. At first, I thought you were talking about like, would there be a market for like games built for that hardware, like built for you know old Voodoo cards or 3D effects or whatever. Uh, there probably would be too. I mean, a very small one, but I don't think it would be quite the same as like indie oh. games made for the Sega Genesis. I guess that's probably a little more viable. Uh, unless like, uh, like emulate, I don't know like how like emulation of some of that hardware is. Like you could build it for that and then, you know, then you know, make a emulated port for you know, Switch and Xbox and whatever. Uh, uh, someone saying this feels like a Neo Geo game, and I could totally see that. Uh, there was two dollars from Jonathan Henson. Thank you. Saying Shadow Mask filters released and games running on. The PSX Core for Mister. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't look into that, but I, I saw that it happened. Yep, the Shadow Mask stuff started getting added like on Friday, I think. I mean, uh, the Yotego cores have had a, like their own Shadow Mask. I don't know if this is the same as that. Is it like Universal now or something? Uh, no, it, I mean. I, I, I don't think that they're the same ones. It's not the same person making them. At least. Well, what would you say is is the, the, the main thrust of the gameplay here? It seems to be all about slapping enemies and stunning them and then throwing them at others. Yeah, yeah. You can also jump and, uh, you know, hit them from, like, above and below. But, yeah, it's really just about... Throwing, throwing enemies around, and you know it's, 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 you know it's a fairly basic game, 
you know, it is. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just gorgeous to look at. Though. Exactly, exactly. And like, it has really good music. Is fantastic. I'm definitely like enjoying the music in it. Um, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'm definitely going to, you know, get the physical copy just, just you know, because we love, we, we love Weston. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it looks like a, a, a pleasant jaunt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if I finish it, then I'll, you know, I'll just play something else. Um, I, the robot, I think, can take two hits. Oh, so everyone's a little different? Uh, I think so. Because the robot, like, if you take a hit, his, his, uh, his head flies off. And then you can take another head. Ah, like uh, like like those robots in, in Super Mario. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess in Super Mario Land. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember them. There's there's these robots that like they like throw their head at you, and then like once their head is gone, they only take one hit. But if you jump on them before they throw their head, then the first hit gets rid of their head, and the second hit. If I collect enough gems, I get a one-up. Yeah, I'm actually doing the best I've ever done. But then again, you know, like, I don't. Oh, so you've you've done a few attempts? Yeah, I mean, I this is going to be in the in our the episode. Oh, that's but, right, that's right. You know, I, I figured like, oh, it kind of goes with like the section that I'm working on for it. So <laughs> you want to tell people about like the situation with the episode of like what it's like, yeah, well, looking well, like? First, I, I want to answer. Uh, 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 Brandon Albert uh, said it was he playing the song. He's playing the Switch version of, of what? Uh, and Ever Monado was asking if they do a physical release. I don't think the I don't think it's out yet, but they're they're at the. I, I know that you can. It's at least coming to Asian mar markets like retail. Like the, like strictly limited games did take pre-orders for a. Um, European physical, and I forget if they were like playing a release that like actually retail or not. But um, I, I do know that there is you like you can, like on um, Play Asia or Amazon Japan. I'm pretty sure you can get a physical there for Asian markets. So I'm definitely I'm definitely going to get it just because I love Western. So this is like pre. Monster World 4, then. Yeah, that's right. Because Monster World 4 is like, is it 9 4 or 9 5? Yeah, it's, it's like a fairly late game. Actually, I'm not sure if Mega Drive games were even released. Like, like I want to say, like, the last Japanese Mega Drive game was released in, like, 95. I'm going to be the robot. So it was a lot earlier than. Genesis games ended here. In fact, I have what I believe is the last, you know, official retail, um, you know, Japanese release, which is uh, Mado Monogatari 1. Oh, is that, you played that on stream too, didn't you? You played that? Uh, did I? It's, it's not, it's not a very... It's not a very playable game if you can't read it, so I probably oh. didn't. Okay. It's it's like a it's a dungeon crawler. It's, it's like a dungeon crawler with with you know the characters that they put into Puyo Puyo. It's like it's like a it's like a remake of the I think the first game that oh, you know, those Puyo Puyo, Puyo characters came from. Um, but the, uh, um, uh, what were we? Oh, oh you're yeah, talking the, about the, the episode. <laughs> yeah. That is, is like very possibly going to be two hours. <laughs> no, it's, it's not possibly. 
Mm. It's like it definitely is going to be. I I don't we, we don't know for sure what your segments are adding up to yet. Uh, yeah, like my segments all add up to like pretty much exactly one hour. Yeah, and mine is gonna mine are gonna be an hour too. Yeah, I mean, so, like I like I don't know if it's gonna be. <laughs> I like I've been joking around saying like it's gonna be either like a total disaster or like as like incredibly popular. Well, I mean, controller videos are always popular. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, and we've done them where, like, I mean, the third first third party controllers episode was an hour. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually used some footage from that episode uh, uh, in in my little introductory segment today that I edited today. So, oh, cool. So, for people that don't know, it's just it's a video on playing. Switch games with the Nintendo Switch Online controller, like like what in what situations is it better? Just like you know, can you play games with these controllers? Because you'll probably get more, more use out of playing them that way than you will like on the actual, you know, like the you virtual know, the, console or whatever it is. You know, the and the Pro controller like doesn't have a very good D pad. So yeah, it's, it's like the main thing is like. You know, not only can you play with like, you know, these controllers that we know and love, but like we actively need a controllers with better D-pads for the Switch, you know? Uh, so when it's an option for, you know, various games, like why not? Yeah. Uh, uh, and some games it's just, it fits really, really well. And the whole, I guess, I guess the joke is, is that, you know, there is... Like, like we cover like like over a hundred games. Well over a hundred. <laughs> well over a hundred games in it. So I mean, it's just like it's just it's kind of a silly idea, but also has the potential to be like a lot of fun for people. I mean, I think people who maybe even aren't even interested in the controllers will just be like, I don't even know a hundred Switch games. <laughs> like, yeah. And, they'll, and they'll, hopefully they'll watch it just because they want to see like what games we're going to show next. Because, I mean, you know, most games, I mean, some some games might go as long as, like, two minutes, like, if there's a lot to say for some reason about, like, how, you know, to set up it for control using certain controllers. Very few go that long. Like, most are, like, roughly a minute or less. Like, yeah. some are 30 seconds. Some and might that's, be 20 And that's what's kind of fun about it, though, I think. Yeah. Is that it just, like, really moves that quickly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, so I, I mean, I, it's, it's definitely. <laughs> I, I hope I hope people will will, will be into. It. Uh, there was a there was a there was a ten dollars super chat from Don. Uh, from who? Not, not 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 Don Corneo, just just Don. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> saying, uh, have you guys played Eastward for Switch? Oh man, I really 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 want to play it. It looks. It looks is it awesome. A, is it a game that would go well in this episode? Uh, it might, well, but it's well, like, and there, and there is a physical copy, like in, uh, in Europe, I think you can, or in Japan, you can get it physically. Uh, it looks kind of like Earthbound, okay. but like in a good way. Yeah. Jeez, I'm getting crushed here. Yeah. I've definitely seen the artwork of this character before. Yeah, it's available from Plasia. I'm sure that there's going to be like a limited run copy, I'm guessing, even though it's already got English on it. But I, I think it looks awesome. That's look pretty neat. It's got, like, it has like, a, I, I kind of like its muted color. Yeah. I'm gonna go back and be in the robot. So oh, it's an RPG or action RPG? I, I don't know. I really know very little about it. I just think it looks awesome. That's kind of like my thing now, is to like not really know what kind of a game a game is. Just like, oh, it looks like something I'd like. 
Uh, there was uh, 499 from Joshua Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, saying, did you watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade? Who was your favorite performer? Uh, I, I'm i pretty sure like when I w- walked into my parents' house, you know, my mom had the TV in the kitchen. Yeah. On, uh, I'm sure that, I mean, she always watches it, so thing, it was definitely on, but I don't remember what was on when I walked by. That was all I saw, so I, I'm afraid I don't have any real answers there. <laughs> uh, I, I watched it kind of like through osmosis, I guess. It was like, it was on. Uh-huh. But, uh, uh, I don't well, know. Well, I think, I think actually, like, like, I, I, do I do it. Yeah, but, but they're not really performers. I, what I think is funny is that, like, I, I don't really consider it performers because, like, literally every musical person is, like, lip syncing the entire time. You know, like, 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 Foreigner was on there, and I was like, well, it doesn't sound like this guy is, like, his voice hasn't aged in 35 years or longer, probably, actually. <laughs> 40 years. Who? Foreigner? Yeah, like the band Foreigner. Uh, I've never heard of a band. Before. No. <laughs> well. But that's to be expected. But 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 the, but they're all just like lip syncing. Well, I mean they have to be to. Totally. I mean I like audio I, to work in that kind of environment. Jeez. Closer to forty-five. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, but I but it's like that every year. <sighs> but I was surprised that like they were even on there. You know, I wonder how they choose. See, now it's starting to get pretty tough. Oh, I actually selected her. You may as well try a new character. Yeah, um, I tried her already, and she's. Oh, she, do you not like her? Well, they all play pretty, pretty similarly. What's What's uh, different about her? Uh, I I don't know. I think the robot's the only one that you can attack twice. It looks like she might have a small. I mean, I don't know if her hitbox is smaller, but she is smaller. Oh, uh, could be that. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, like, it, I, I don't watch the parade for the, the, uh, the performers, I guess. I don't know, I, just... I, I've never had tremendous interest in parades, honestly. Just in general? Just in general, I guess. Like, I can't remember a time I ever was like, boy, howdy, I had a great time at that parade. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I, I've shot the video of the local, uh, you know, Christmas parades a couple of times. But it's been years. Get my robot back. That. I mean, it's she definitely... didn't think you hit too. It, it looked like she was like dizzy or something. Wow, yeah, that's getting tough. Yeah, I just I don't even know what I'm doing. It, am I just supposed to try to get the? Supposed to get the lasers or the stars? Star power? You got boost power. I guess a lot easier then. But I don't know what Are you makes invincible it. when you have that? Yeah, I don't know what, what triggers it though. But I bet this is fun with two players. There's no there's no online, obviously, but I guess it's expected. I mean, I feel like it, it's I mean the sprites are rather large, honestly, to fit two players into this playfield. Well, they were thinking about making it three players, I guess, at one point. Oh, really? Yeah. But... 
see. I mean, on PC too. I don't know. What? Uh, Robert Lawrence was asking if it was on PC. Uh, I mean, I have no idea. If, if like, if a lot of the Enon games generally been released, is it, is it, 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 is it Enon? Like the Turrican Collection, isn't that on PC? I don't know. Is that how it's pronounced? Is it Enon? I mean, that's what I've always said. I, I actually don't know. I, I mean, I don't know what, it's, what it is. That with, if getting enough of those uh, things in a row does anything. Oh, look at this. I don't know. I crushed that guy. So this is like the main bad guy. I always gets ejected from the thing. Ooh, oh, I can oh. This, this could this possibly be this is two tears to this boss. It could be the last boss. I, I really like the boss uh, health. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like almost exactly like something else, and I can't quite think of what it is. Maybe something from Kirby. Some Kirby game maybe has a similar. Health meter, or I, I, I'm not sure exactly what I'm thinking of, but it, Ooh, this looks like this looks like it could be a fa final boss right here. Look at that life bar. It's just see that. Look, it says that bomb. Why, why is this? Why is this fish want to kill you? Uh, there's there's a little bit of a story behind like at the start of it, but I'm not sure what it means. Those are those are atomic bombs you're throwing. I know. Am I supposed to do this? It doesn't seem like. Oh, I see. Oh, you, you oh no, that hurts hand. me. That kills me, so I can't. I, that's not the way to do it. Are you supposed to just get rid of them and then punch the hands? Maybe. But I could just tank it, I guess, if I wanted to. Still got enough, uh... Continues. Didn't you say you only have nine continues? Yeah. You've only continued maybe four or five times? Yeah, probably more than that. Probably like seven times. Uh, there was uh, five dollars from EB Chill too. Thank you. EB, EB Chill Two's been hanging out a little bit in the, the back loggery stream. Oh yeah. Too. Oh, uh, is that gonna be off. it? That was my last continue. Oh no. That's all right. You know, it's like I know that's not that long. I bet I can do it. Yeah. Uh, EB Chill Two says, uh, "What would you gentlemen consider a good Thanksgiving game?" For me, it would be Pierre Jackson's King Kong, because King Kong was always on that day. It, like, the King Kong movie take place on Thanksgiving? I have no idea. Is it like, have the Macy's Parade or something? It's been so long since I've seen it. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I mean, I used to, back in the late 90s, I mean, it, I feel like it doesn't happen as consistently as it used to, but like, in the late 90s, like, there was just like, you know, this like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this game is finally coming out. Like, super exciting game to have it released, like, the week of things. <laughs> like, you know, Ocarina of Time, Final Fantasy IX. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was there was always, like, you know, Final some Fantasy really is the one that I really think of, because I remember, you know, that coming out, like, right before, like, you know, as I was on break from school. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, my, my Ocarina of Time release, uh, experience was somewhat ruined because, uh, my, my, my parents decided they wanted to go, you know, on a, on a trip to Maine 
for Thanksgiving that year. And I was just like, are you kidding? <laughs> like, I mean, we normally just stayed home for Thanksgiving. Like, we would sometimes, like, at another point in the month, like, go to my grandma's house. But, like, Thanksgiving was normally just, just at our house. You know, me and my parents, it was never a big, it, it wasn't really a big get together holiday, you know, back at that time. And it sometimes is now and sometimes isn't. Sometimes it's just us. Um, but it was usually, usually, usually just us, usually stay at home. Um, and uh, so I, I just thought this year would be no different. And then it's just like, um, like, I. Like, I cannot not be playing this game. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was just inconceivable to me. You know? <laughs> that, like, I would not be doing nothing but playing Ocarina of Time uh, on Thanksgiving. And my... Uh, so, it, 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 I was especially annoyed because, like... Like, my mom, like, went through this, like, big main phase. Like, she just loved Maine. And we had been to Maine, like, several times over the past several years. And I was just, I got, I was real sick of it. And so, like, and then, like, it getting in the way of my Ocarina of Time, like, I was just, like, so done with me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I i did bring my n64 and tried to play it on the hotel tv which was not easy uh, but you did and, and you it remember was, it because of that well yeah i do but it was like the tv was like so bad and so dark and yeah but, but it's like it's like this, it's like a memorable out. like one of a kind experience that you just had with it it yeah. was well i mean so the forest temple I, I specifically remember playing the forest temple while I was there. And, you know, you know, my, my parents wanted to go out and do things that I didn't want. So I, you know, I stayed in the hotel room uh, and you know, played the forest temple. And I was stuck there for so long because there's this one part where uh, the you're you're going down this corridor and you move. There, there might be a couple of these like kind of dark corridors. And you push some boxes, and at some point you like uncover like a path, like a little nook to the side that has a ladder that goes up. And I was just going all around like, where do I go next? I can't figure this out. And I, I eventually found it, but the, I could I, I had such a hard time seeing where to go next because it was so dark on that TV that I couldn't see that little nook where the ladder was, or at least I couldn't see it very clearly. Like I just couldn't even see that it was there. So, but you're right. I mean, that's an experience that I always remember now. You know, and it certainly didn't, you know, detract from how much I came to love that game. You know, so it's, it's definitely memorable experience my mom ended up being sick on thanksgiving though me and my dad ate thanksgiving dinner at denny's <laughs> <laughs> which is not a that's not a bad you know bad no but as long like, as you're I getting so like the, the grand slam it was it was <laughs> it was I, I was so annoyed by it though that it kind of ruined denny's for me for years because that was like the only time i like that might have been the first time i'd ever had denny's really yeah, and then like I didn't like want to eat it again for years and years, you know, because like I was just that you experience can just bosses with that, this of, thing. of you know the golden power, you know, of, of of Thanksgiving break not being what I wanted it to be ruined Denny's for years for me, and then I finally had Denny's like I don't know some sometime in the past decade, and I was like, oh, oh it's, it's actually not bad. <laughs> Uh, someone's saying they hear some some button clicking if I was using an arcade stick. And I'm actually using the Genesis 3 button uh, switch online controller. 
I feel like it's yep. it's appropriate. It's a very appropriate game. Controller focus. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I feel like Final I mean, it's, it's, it's so hard to say. You know, I mean, I, you know, I know Donkey Kong 64 is not like a super loved, uh, game, really. You know, that was the next year's big Thanksgiving game. Uh, and, uh, I guess Donkey Kong 64 is kind of loved by speedrunners, but like just for the game on its own merits, you know, not the most beloved, but I just, I like, I like that was, you know, the, the perfect game for me at the perfect time. And I just, I, I ate it up. Like, I just <laughs> like this, like super long platformer with like, so dang many things to collect. And like, that was, that was perfect to play on Thanksgiving. Uh, but then the next year, I had my PlayStation, and uh, I, I, you know, I felt real guilty about it at the time. Like I was like, I can't believe I'm <laughs> going to choose a PlayStation Thanksgiving game over uh, over a Nintendo one. But you know, I got. Uh, I got Final Fantasy IX instead of Banjo Tooie, uh, <laughs> and it was absolutely the right choice. I mean, that was, and that was probably the best like experience I, I had. Like just like devouring a Thanksgiving game, you know, over the course <laughs> of that week, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then, like after I beat it, I got Banjo. -Tooie. And like I got real burned out on Banjo too. Like Donkey Kong 64 did not uh, ruin uh, collectathons for me, but Banjo Tooie was like a step too far for me. And I, I was that I never, after? Huh? Is that before or after? Uh, Banjo Tooie came after Donkey Kong 64. It came the next year. Oh, man, they were really cranking those things out, weren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, different teams. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, Banjo-Tooie, I think it's technically a smaller game, and, you know, it doesn't have, like, the no. different items to collect for different characters thing, but it just, something about it was more obnoxious to me, and I don't know if it was just it one is. game too many okay, in that style that's my first continue I've used. Of course, like, you know, I've gone back and, like, I loved Ukulele. You know, I could, I could definitely get down with a good throwback 3D platformer now, but like at the time, like I definitely got, I was definitely a little burned out on it. But Final Fantasy IX, I mean, you know, that was, you know, that was another Thanksgiving at home, and, uh, you know, I just, I devoured that. Thank it was, you. It was so good. I believe there was another Yo-Yo Yoshio that I missed. Okay. Let me take a look. Uh, there was. From eight minutes ago. Thank you. Saying, uh, are there any, any guests you would really like to have on stream but haven't yet? I vote for someone like LGR or MVG. Also, don't think... Don't you think Huck Londo looks like Jack from Jack and Daxter? Uh, I, I can see, can see that. yeah, I can see Huck Londo. Be, be Huck in, Londo, what a great name! I know, right? Uh, we have had, we have had. LGR was, was on. Uh, yeah, uh, we played King's Quest for the uh, Master the Master System, System King's. That was years ago. Yep, yep. We've not had MVG on though. We definitely mm. should. Yeah, I really, like, I'd like to have a mind when we play like a Shantae. Yeah. Shantae. yeah. Um. There was also two dollars from Demo Kirby, uh, saying uh, was stuck a week in the Forest Temple wall rotation room. Oh, yeah, you know I remember seeing that in like you know IGN like video previews and stuff. It was always like the craziest thing, but you know they never show you. They never actually show the room twisting and untwisting. It always like does this like camera like the camera like moves through it. 
And then like, you know, I guess they just like swap out the, the model. And like, then it comes back and it's like, oh, it's straight now. And then it goes down and it comes back and it's like, oh, it's crooked now. <laughs> it's definitely visually cool though. But you know, they didn't, they weren't doing anything too wacky with it. But it had, an, it had a, a cool impact. I sometimes kind of wonder if I'm even playing this game correctly. You ever feel like that? Yeah, I mean, that happens a lot with treasure games, right? Yeah. Like, like, Dynamite Heady and stuff. I had an idea. For next year. That I was thinking about... What if I... If a game is, like, under 10 hours... If I commit to playing it two times in a row. You mean like two evenings in a row? No, no, just like... On stream. No, 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 no. I'm talking just like, in, like, just as a rule. Just you like... You to play through the game another t a second time, like right away. Yeah. That's, that's actually, that's actually because, a great idea. Because, you know, you... You learn so much about a game. You know, I think it was like Tim Rogers quoted like Kirk Hamilton or something like that, saying like, "You don't really understand a game until you until you finish it twice." I, I think I, I think I saw I think I saw yeah like the like the thing Kirk that they Hamilton was, sounds right. I feel like I saw I saw him say like games are always better the second time you play them. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. seems, seems like kind of a cool idea. I mean, if it's something I mean, that it's, like, not, like, such a, you know, if it's not, like, an RPG or something like that. But, may, I mean, maybe you, you could do it with RPGs. Like, really, like, by the time you, if you like something, like, and it just wasn't something you, like, hated, yeah. like, that might be just kind of a fun thing. And you would probably, like, like really appreciate a game a lot more that second yeah. time through. You do, like, like, because there's always this, like... I feel like I'm better at it than I used to, but like when, you know, when I was young, like I remember like the first like couple, sometimes even several hours of the game. Like I was often like, am I really like enjoying this? Like, like sometimes it was like this game that you were like so super like unbelievably excited for and you just feel like you should just be having the time of your life from minute one. Like there's this there's this acclimation period, you know? Yeah. Or like yeah. you're learning it, you're kind of settling into the world that it's creating, and like sometimes you're like, you know, you don't really understand what it's what's going for, what it's trying to portray, I guess. And like I feel like that was actually when it was when I was younger, I almost feel like it was harder for me. Nowadays, like I feel like. I have much more of a sense of like, like, oh, like, like this seems cool and like I'm immediately kind of into it, you know? Yeah. But sometimes like, I feel I, like I, I like rush through a game and it's just like usually to finish it. But like, even if I rush through it, like maybe if I replayed it right like again, I wouldn't rush through it and I would pick up a lot more of stuff that I, that I just missed out on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I would like appreciate it more and just and just understand it better. Yeah, I mean, I I, I definitely think that's 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 a very cool idea for I, sure. Right? Like, if it's if it's sub, maybe 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 that maybe that'll maybe that's a good New Year's resolution for both of us. Any yeah. game that we beat that's under ten hours. We, it play takes less second. than 10 hours, we, we play it again. Yeah. And then the next year, we up it to 20 hours. I'm just kidding. <laughs> or maybe, uh, maybe I'm not. I see uh, our Monado's comment here, Kamai, saying Tropical Freeze is my perfect game. Oh. And, and we're... We're not we're not gonna be friends in this new episode, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> I I uh I, 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 
you know, Tropical Freeze is a pretty obvious game to, you know, try the Super Nintendo controller with. Spoilers, it doesn't work very well for it. Um, but, like, I, I spend most of the, the section, like, talking about how, like, I, look, I know a lot of people, a lot of people, like, think that, Jeez. think that, think what you think and that Tropical Freeze is, like, the perfect video game. Like a lot of people are like, it's the best platformer ever made. And I wish I agreed with you, I do. Because, you know, as I say in the episode, it is aesthetically perfect. Like the visuals, the music, the the level design, and like the, well, the level design in the sense of like the, the visual design of the levels. The, the you know, the, there's a lot of depth to it and there's a lot of like traveling I through the level you know sometimes in unexpected ways but i cannot stand the game i just i cannot stand how how it feels it is so completely unlike the um the so completely unlike the Super Nintendo games. And those to me are, like are I'm better off just doing that. Uh, they, you know, they just the and the way the levels are designed, like there's just a flow to those games. It's just so perfect. And maybe there is also in the, in Retro Studios games, but I can't find it because they are so different. Like, you jump out of a roll jump, like, like it's almost like, okay, let's imagine you've got the 4-3 Super Nintendo game and you stretched it to 16-9. Okay, the amount that you do your roll jump now when it stretches 16-9, that's what you do in Retro Studios Donkey Kong Country games. <laughs> And it is so wrong, I cannot get over it. It is so wrong, I cannot stay, like, I, if I had never played the Super Nintendo games, I would probably love Retro Studios games. Uh, <laughs> and, but I cannot acclimate. I can, like, it is so rare for me to like, just be so infuriated by like, they, you know, they change it so now it sucks. It's very, I, I'm very open to, uh, to, to, you know, trying new things with sequels. It's fine. The, with those games, I can not deal. Tropical Freeze is way better than Returns, though. Way better than Returns. Um, but like aesthetically, it's like I, honestly, like the like the. The, the the Viking animals are probably <laughs> more appealing villains than the Kremlings. Uh, you know, if only it played like the Super Nintendo games. If but like, only. I, I, like, my love for those games is real strong. Like, and I just, I can't get over the not playing the same way. Like, every move I make just makes me angry. I've beaten them, by the way. I I liked Tropical Freeze. <laughs> you, you, you decided right then and there that you had to beat them or else you wouldn't be able to, like, talk about it like this. Forever. <laughs> well, and that, yeah, and then yeah, it's I like, be, I gotta be able to. I wouldn't be allowed to. Yeah. I wouldn't be allowed like, to if I hadn't been. Like, no, you know, I, mean, I finished them both, so I'm allowed to, you know, say it's crap. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I liked Tropical Freeze when I played it on Wii U because I co opted it with Drum. You know, co oping like, is inherently kind of fun, right? Well, look at that guy kicked out of the kid's sun castle. What? Like, the fish kicked over the kid's sun castle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Dr. Hengyo. Um, you know, so I liked it. Like I acknowledge, like I acknowledged like at the time, like, oh, it's different. It's still not 
doesn't play quite the same, but you know, had a good time. It looked really cool. It sounded really cool. But then like going back to it to like, you know, for this episode we're working on, like playing just playing it by myself, I, I'm just I'm upset all over again. <laughs> And and look, I I I, rem- not, I, re- I remember like, like a very like strongly worded blog post you made like when yeah, Returns it, came out. When Donkey Kong Country Returns, oh yeah, that was like I before was, I even I was, knew you. I remember you talking about it though. Yeah, I I did. I I I I I kept an IGN blog at the time. And, yeah, uh, it's got to still be there. It's probably still there. Yeah, yeah I, I'm pretty sure that I looked it up how recently. Angry I was about Donkey Kong Country Returns. I mean, uh, if you look, if you you're the blog is is the blog is still there. I'm pretty sure because I think that we may have looked it up on a previous live stream. We did, yeah. But I, oh, like, I, like, I, the thing is, like, I, I think Returns is kind of a creatively bankrupt game. Uh Tropical freeze is <laughs> tropical. <laughs> that's like it's like such uh, such uh, such strong, uh, like a knock knock against it. I guess. Would you say it's like it's a? Uh... It's very much like <laughs> let's like 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 it it feels stylistically like it's just a rehash of the first game. Yeah. Like it recycles a lot of music. It recycles a lot of very similar environments. Tropical Freeze creates its own identity. Yeah, I guess, it has I guess, an like, all new David Wise soundtrack. It creates its own identity. It, it's going to be your it music really while you're together aesthetically. Going crazy about Donkey Kong Country. We're going to listen to it. We're listening to you. Uh, this is your but, soundtrack for when you're. Going in on Donkey Kong Country in Retro <laughs> Studios, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but uh, I just I can I wish I could get over how they how they play. I wish I could get over it. I wish I could get over it. Uh, I see there is uh, five dollars from uh, Stu Stu Bl- Stu Blazinski. Thank you. Saying I feel it's similar about game. Final Fantasy VII Remake so, to how you feel about Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Uh, they set the shoehorn in Sephiroth dial to eleven. I, that's that's like that was my my thing. Like they they I, I joked about it in the video that we did. Say they couldn't keep it. They couldn't keep Sephiroth in their pants like for the even like the first like hour and a half. Yeah, but you know what's so funny? Like both of us like. We were pretty annoyed by the ending and everything, mm-hmm. uh, but then like over time we've come to over time we just kind of chilled on it and like I like totally want to replay it on PS5. You know, I, I enjoyed playing the Ufi DLC. Yeah, you know, I, I want to replay it on PS PS5. Like I I definitely chilled on my frustration with that game. Yeah. But I did not feel all my frustration with Donkey Kong Country <laughs> Retro Studios. So here's the thing. So you can kind of see like some of the things that I'll be talking about in the in the episode ah. here. Like, oh, did you do Final Fantasy Nine? I did Final Fantasy Seven, Eight, and Nine. Oh, like okay. these are all things that I kind of added a little bit. You know, I was like, oh, I could just talk about this for like a minute. And mm-hmm. you know, I did Seven, Eight, and Nine because you can you can play all three. Like, and I was like, oh, you know, it's kind of like a peek into an alternate reality where. If you play it with the Super NES controller, where Nintendo or S- Square like never yeah, and, left. You know, I always like. I probably wouldn't do it now, but like I used to hate the Dual Shock, and I oh. always preferred just the. I I, I love Dual Shock now, but I I used to not like it at all, and I, I always wanted to play with just the D pad only controller. So like I, you know, I definitely played those games originally with the D pad. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for uh, letting me know. I we missed a donation from uh, from Stephanie Brown for four ninety nine. Thank you. I Saying try, that. I can't believe you don't remember foreigner. Foreigner, I want to know what love is. Eighties music rocks. I, mean, I want know, you I, to I, um, show me. That's the song that he sang. I uh, I I do not uh, keep up with yeah. 
pop culture, especially musical pop culture at all. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, uh, so here's another thing. This is like another thing that I only added because it was on on sale for $10 yesterday. I'm like, you know, I had the first Mega Man Legacy Collection. I think it was like $6, like at one point. So I had bought it. But I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to get Legacy Collection 2 because the fact is, is that you can play Mega Man 1 through 10 completely with the NES controller. Really? So you can you remap 9 and... and 9 doesn't need yeah, remapping. Remap it's just, it's just jumping and shooting and start to... Uh, access your menu there's not even any shoulder button shortcuts to cycle through your weapons in nine awesome and and 10 has that but you don't need them and what's kind of interesting is that eight gosh, totally it makes, gosh that really makes me want to get both of them for <laughs> i know right so uh like that was kind of a fun thing that i didn't even realize was going to be true but when i saw that on sale for ten dollars like you know i'm just gonna i'm gonna get that because i want to see if these are if digital it's possible. copy yeah, yeah, but I mean, I didn't, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, I I definitely probably will try to find the physical copy of that if it has all the games on the cart. But, uh, yeah. you know, like, even 8, you know, like, it it has uh, two attack buttons. It has, like, a button to always be able to use your Mega Buster. And yeah, there's another. Yeah. But you can just, you know, just assign the one that uses your weapon as your B button. And you have jump and shoot. That's all you need in your shoulder buttons to go through. And that, and, and you just won't have access to Mega, Mega Buster at all times, which I'm not sure if it like breaks the game, but I, I don't think it does. Not. No, you just have to go into your menu and do it. And it's well, nice, you know, it's I, nice I, having I, the shoulder I, buttons I, for that one because you have to I, go I in, in and out of the menus. Or The I, menu takes so long to load in that one. I, I make this whole point when I... Uh... I do a little bit on luminous, luminous Avenger X, which, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Gunvolt games, but I, I make this point in it that like, you know, you wouldn't be able to, you know, sir, you know, depending on what control you're playing with, you might limit yourself to like quick, like ability selections. Mm-hmm. Like I always, even once they introduced with like seven, like the R and L, or I guess they really introduced it with X with the R and L like cycling for your abilities. Right. Like I can never remember what color is what I can never remember. Like, Oh, this is next to this. I always, always pause the game and choose what I want. Right. Cause I feel like in the heat of the action, like fumbling through that is way like I just, I always pause the game. I've never like, you know, there's so, so many people that are like, you know, when like didn't legacy collection or some versions at least add like, you know, being able to cycle through abilities and like the NES games and stuff. And some people are like, Oh, that's so nice. It's a godsend. And it's just like, no, I, I don't even, like, I don't even like that. Yeah. I, I can't even tell, you know, like whatever, but th- th- it's nice in, in eight because it going into the menu isn't just like, like a super quick thing. It, it became less appealing. I think when the menu for to like choose your weapon became like a whole other screen instead of just like the little box that pops up. Oh, show a game. But I mean, I, I guess I could... a Mega Man eight with an NES controller, like is really appealing to me. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I kind of have a little side thing in there where I said, Oh, and, and you know, if you wanted to play, uh, Mega Man 1 through 6, you know, Wily War style. You know, if you want to play like the Genesis game, you could play with a three button Genesis controller and put like the uh, pause on A, which just goes into your menu. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so I should play something here. Um, so I had ordered this like a little while back because I thought it looked kind of like Klonoa, this, uh, this case and the wild masks. I can play that or I can play Battle Axe. Kaze. Kaze I don't know. Kaze means do, do, win. <laughs> do you have any preference? Because I, I could play the other one of them. I'll try that Kaze game. Okay. All right. Have you actually played it? No, yet, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, there was uh, there was a five uh, five dollar super chat from uh, DT Playthroughs. Thank you. 
uh, saying, have you played American Hero? It's a Jaguar FMV game unarchived and released two weeks ago, much like Clockwork. It'd be a great game to stream. Uh, neither of us has a Jaguar. I haven't heard of that. That, that, that it, what was... Is it, is it Jaguar or what? what I'm going to see if I can play with the Genesis controller. Is it, is it CDI that has that that Hulk Hogan game that Audi really likes? I don't know. Is that the something FMV in Paradise? Game. Like, a, like Trouble in Paradise or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm not familiar with that, though. That's interesting. All right, the, the audio isn't quite as loud on this. That was good. Oh, do you need to switch to widescreen? Oh, I do, yes. Oh. There we go. Sounds like pretty good music. Yeah. Oh, we got controls. Oh, we got... Two button game. Are, are you gonna have to? Are you gonna have to work this into the episode now? Well, I, I was planning on it, anyways. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, there's so few controls. Hang on one second. I love. That. <laughs> I think Colin knows Look what we got here. <laughs> so, are are you gonna go? Oh, look at this. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Just saying hi. <laughs> probably waiting. I was waiting for the kids to go to sleep. She's probably so tired. Having the kids around so much wears her out, I think. Sandy, look! <laughs> Sandy, look! Look, look, look! Look! She's going. Come look. Look at the puppy. Can you see it? Yeah, she is. <laughs> oh. I think it's gone. She, she is getting bigger. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's harder to notice. Oh, look, look, Sandy, look. <laughs> so I can't really you see, see your face very well. I don't know if it's because of my like the nightshade on my monitor. You see that, Sandy? Look at that. <laughs> She's like, do I have to be trotted like, out every week? I can't tell if that's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> That's so funny, though. What are these lights? Our ears bent back. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's little floppy <laughs> ears. She just, I think she just wants to go to sleep, though. She just, like, puts her head down. You want to take her? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, there, there's the two dollars from Kelly. <laughs> Bought tip for my favorite gamer dogs. <laughs> there's also five dollars Canadian from my Jack Green saying Rockstar should bring back Max Payne 1 and 2 for PS5, Xbox, and Switch, and remake them with HD graphics. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think that sounds like a good idea. I'd like that. But, you know, at least they're backwards compatible now on Xbox. Alright, so... Ooh, I, ooh, I can make this air smash be its own button, or I can make it a down and attack. I, 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 I mean, to me, it sounds like this, this, this sure looks like an NES controller game to me. Yeah, but I don't feel like it. Like it, I don't know. I I, I feel I have the uh, the Genesis controller in my hand, and I I feel as though I have come to reappreciate the Genesis three button throughout this entire experience. I wonder if like the minus button uh, does anything though. I will find out. I don't think so. Uh, I do want to say like so Max Payne one and two like it'd be really cool if they remade them. But I, like, I don't know if Rockstar should do it. It should be Remedy doing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure who all was involved with the Alan Wake remaster, but I think I think Remedy was, in, was somewhat involved. At least that was the impression I got. 
don't know. I, I, I don't know who did that. Who did that? It does need Sam Lake's face, though. Yes. There needs to be a version of Max Payne 2 with Sam Lake's face. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean... I, I said there needs to be. Yeah, exactly. I, what, what I always did when I was testing out games for this episode, I started with a pro controller and, like, just checked, like, what does everything do? Mm-hmm. You know. This does not seem like the kind of game that would have a something on the on the minus button, unless it's like a map or something. Yeah, that was definitely a trade off with a couple of games. Yeah, I, and in like, some cases you just it's like well you could play it, but you can't get the map. Yeah, or it might have like a like you know a, a collection menu, or it might have oh it even has like a ring. Yeah, I, I mean, this character looks exactly like Kanoa. And if they don't speak in English, that would be even better. Should I go oop a doop <laughs> Got some heavy stuff going on here. Can I skip this? Uh, someone asking if this is the, um, if this, if this is streamed in multiple places, or if this is the OG one. This is the OG. This is the only places it streams to. Well, oh, I, 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 I think we missed it, but there was also, uh, just $5 from Mega X6 with no comment, but thank you as always. Oh, I can't, I need the X button to look at the album. Whatever that means. That's probably not. Important. But yeah, exactly. Like you know, you like got to make concessions collect- for that kind of stuff, like constantly. And like the, in the video, you know, like this just yeah. like okay, so this stuff is like not even like important, and I and I barely even uh, mention it unless it's something like really important. No, I, you know, so, some of the things we're already talking about, like, already have me excited to, like, watch your section. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I didn't, like, the Mega Man stuff? Like, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Oh, this, it does feel kind of like Donkey Kong Country. Like, you pick up momentum when you attack them. Can you, like, roll through enemies? Ah, yeah. okay, okay. You can, oh, you, look at that, too. You see that? You, do you have a Dixie Kong? Oh, it's that little thing. Oh, look at there's there's four little things too. You got a K. Yeah, but you notice how I can go off the edge and then jump out of my spin. This is more DKC than Klonoa then. Yeah, it's oh, it's, see, it's, it's DKC with. Is it, is it, is it with, stuttering or is that just the stream? It's definitely not stuttering. Oh, well, maybe. Hang on. Does it does it have the Unity stutter? <laughs> Actually, it looks pretty smooth now. Well, I saw it. Kind of—it's almost like the camera speeds up and slows down. Those, when you're jumping into those trees. Oh, I don't know. Like it, it stuttered, it stuttered on stream a few times. You know what else it makes me think of? Just because of the character is like the the Tiny Toons NES game. Right. This looks really good. <laughs> so what's this gonna be? Bonus stage, collect all the crystals. This looks better than Retro Studios Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> it's more Donkey Kong Country than, than Donkey Kong Country Returns. I do talk about a game in the episode that's more Donkey Kong Country than Donkey Kong Country Returns, and yeah. everyone knows is. Oh, if you okay, you can you can float too, so you can s- slow down your fall. Like so, that'd be like, uh, what's her face? The uh, Dixie. Can you believe I still have not beaten that game though? What? Oh, Ukulele in the Impossible Land. That's very surprising to me. It is extremely surprising. I like, I love it, but like I, I, I did like three or four attempts at the impossible layer and I felt like I needed more bees to protect me. Yeah. And I wasn't really sure where to find any others. So, you know, I eventually got the Xbox version. So I think I'll just replay it on that. Mm. Uh, 
and finish it there. I love that game though. I, I cannot, that is extremely unlike me to love a game that much and then it just like falls on the back burner. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's fantastic. It's so, so good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I never, like, I, I got so close to finishing it. Like, I, I beat all of the regular levels. I, I believe I beat all of the regular levels and then, like, all of their alternative versions. But there's still a lot more, uh, a lot more, <laughs> uh, stars than that. No damage. I don't, this seems like something you'd like. like it feels. This does seem like something I, I'd like. I, I'm, I'm going. Did you get it on Amazon? I think. I, uh, yeah. I think it's. I bet it's like. Uh, Twenty-five dollars, if not less, right now. It's twenty-nine. Okay, so it's not. Uh, I mean. You could just like wait because I I think it's sold at Best Buy also, and you know things at Best Buy always get marked down a lot. It does not seem like a game that probably would sell. Ooh oh oh oh, oh look at so you have like a like a ground stomp type thing. So well, yeah, that was that was what you had a separate button. Right. Yeah. Oh, died. Oh, this is Zoe Desco, which was, yeah. you know, the the publisher that like was do like doing this kind of stuff like back when we did the uh we did the digital the, on disc or something like that. Digital on disc and like that that concept like it was so fun to do at the time. But it's so outdated. Such an outdated concept. Well, now. right, exactly, which is is kind of crazy because so, like it would like I mean it's great that like that idea like doesn't even make any sense anymore. No, like, like people have asked so, us if we could do. I uh, know. Do uh, do another one? It's like uh, it's. Uh, I don't. Uh, no, we probably can't. <laughs> I still think that the point is still there. That it's like, you know, it, like when I was thinking of it was like I was thinking of like you know I was thinking of is like budget games are bad. You know, and let's let's see what if any of these are actually any good. You know, right? But it's like the, the oh, landscape, shit. like th that stuff is just like so integrated into just how things are now. Um, but the Xbox One version is twenty five dollars. Oh well. I didn't realize it got But you couldn't play that with an NES controller. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that you could hit, hold on or hold on your jump button to to do the slow fall. But it's like you hold on attack to do it. And it just feels Well, it's kinda... like Dixie Kong. I mean, that's clearly what they're going for. Yeah. Oh, wait, does she require yeah. you to hold on attack? Yeah, you hold down attack. Oh. So I... Yeah, I, I definitely need to get this. This is the same. Look at this. Right up it's my, got some momentum here. Right up my alley. And speaking of a game where you play as a bunny, uh, you know, I, I just got. I ordered it from Play Asia because um, there's a, a Asian physical of that game that uh, Alex Alex did a, a video on Digital Foundry looking at the oh, PC right. version of. He, he kept calling it Fist Forged in Shadow Torch. And I realized when I got the game that, like, the Forged in Shadow Torch is just written under Fist to, like, show what Fist stands for. But he, like, kept treating it like a subtitle, but I think you're just supposed to call it Fist. Because the spine just says Fist. It doesn't say Fists. Fist Forged in Shadow Torch. <laughs> but I thought it looked really good. Yeah. Oh, should I try again? How's that looking? So I, I think that's my first PS5 import. Oh. Uh, I'm falling behind uh, a couple of uh, yeah. super chats. Uh, so 
So I wonder if it'd be more appropriate if I was playing this with the Super NES controller. Probably. I mean, the. It, I mean, I, I, it's so like there's there's definitely Klonoa inspiration in like the character and the story setup, like with the ring and everything. Yeah. But, like I feel like there's more like. Donkey Kong Country and Tiny Toons almost, and how it actually plays. Oh, and how it plays Donkey Kong Country for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely doesn't really look like it plays like Klonoa, but it takes some Klonoa from its sort of theme, themes. Uh, there was a $5 super chat from uh, Brent Terry. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And, uh, hey, Try, I went to the grid thanks to your projector video. That place was great. Do you have any other suggestions for stores in town? Um, well, speaking of the grid, I'm not sure how long ago you were there. They just moved. Oh, really? Uh, to a bigger place? or? Uh, I, I don't know if it's bigger necessarily, but it's like, it's like on the whole opposite end of town. It used to be like near the UNC Charlotte area kind of near where Save Point video games is. But now it's like more toward the airport on the western side of town and in this like larger <laughs> Goodwill campus. Um, uh, my, my dad said he actually saw something about it. So like my dad told me that. Like what's funny is Good Vibe Collecting, who, uh, you know, is in our Discord, uh, Told me like, oh, the, said like, oh, the grid moved. I'm like, he lives in like Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a, it's a pretty well-known store, I think, just because people are all like, ooh, you know, a Goodwill that's just an electronics store. Um, uh, so like, I think a lot of people outside of the area know of it. But yeah, it was news to me. Like last time I went there was, I don't know, maybe the summer, I thought. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's been longer than that. I've definitely been there at least once this year, but it was at its you know original location. Uh, but no, I've not been to the new location. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, other stores, like, I mean, Video Game World is, is, is the big one, in my opinion. Uh, you know, their main store is in Huntersville. You know, I, I shoot lots of stuff there uh you know i shot some arcade stuff there and some some footage of their shelves and things uh in uh in the super scope episode I, I've, I've shot many things at video game World. in fact it was it was uh there that i shot the crt projector stuff you know they, they let me stay after hours and shoot that um uh so that store is great there's also another location in Concord, maybe? I've not been to that one. There have been a few other locations oh, of Video Game World that have come and gone, but the original time. location in Huntersville is the only one of the existing ones oh. that, uh, that I've been to. Let me get a... Oh. Hang on. Then there's also State Point Video Games, uh, sort of in the UNCC area, sort of near Ikea, not too far from Ikea. Um, oh, you know what? My three button Genesis controller was dead when I tried using it the other day. And like, I hadn't used it in several days. Like, I wonder if the battery in it is kind of less than some of the others. Cause I didn't feel like I'd used it that much. Um, there's also uh, one or two, there used to be several places called Gamers Alley. I'm not sure how many of those there are now. They're not as convenient for me, but uh, they're pretty good, uh, actually. Um, or they can be. Um, uh, and let's see. There's also a place in Lincoln Tents, a little further out for me, called uh, Game Swap. That's where I got my Famicom disk system. Um, and also, not that long ago, like more... I stopped on my way up from the Asheville area. There's um, in Marion, North Carolina, there is a, a store called uh, The Game Store and More. And it was actually a really nice little store. So yeah, there's, you know, 
Charlotte and the areas are within an hour ish of Charlotte. Uh, quite a lot of game stores actually. Uh, there was five dollars from EB Chill too. Thank you again. Uh, saying I bought mine for Xbox on eBay for one uh, twenty one ninety nine. Uh, are you talking about Kaze, perhaps? I'm guessing probably. Uh, so I'm um, switching over the Super Nintendo controller because <laughs> my other okay. one. Is it looks like on. you have a little battery on it too. Uh, no, it's it, that should be fine. Are I think you it just might need to charge these overnight. <laughs> <laughs> to finish the episode. Yeah. Air Smash. So, like, in this situation, this is the kind of place where I like to use, like, you know, Air Smash, if I can put one button, I, I put it on R. I hear you. Come on up. You can come up here. Um. Yeah, I heard Sophia, too. It's like, See, she's you know, I actually make jealous. a point, like, talking about Bloodstain that like, I actually prefer Up and B in Castlevania. Yeah. Over playing... What about you? Do you prefer it on a separate button or? Uh, no, I prefer to have Up and Attack. Yeah I, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I guess my, I mean, I can understand why some people might think that that's not a good thing. But what I like about it is your finger doesn't have, like, your finger never has to move off of the attack button. Like it can stay on the attack button. Like you don't have to right. reach over to another button. Like it's just, it's much more efficient. I think, you know, I, I really like up and B in general. But yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm tempted to get this on switch. Have you noticed any, any frame rate judders or anything on this at all? I think it seems like, I think it seems okay. Because, like, I see some jetters every once in a while, but it might just be the stream. I mean, sometimes it moves in a way that... Uh, it's like the camera's catching up. But I don't know. Like, I, it doesn't feel like something that would be distracting. Yeah. Well, yeah, this, this, this definitely looks up my alley. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye out for, for some version. <laughs> um, and there was also five pounds from Jamie Maxwell quite early in the morning over there in, in the pounds <laughs> land, uh, saying, uh, uh, hello, looking at buying the Castlevania GBA set on switch as it's on sale, though I own all the originals. When this happens, do you sell your originals? Uh, well, I mean, uh, no, I, I'll get into that <laughs> more later, but, but, uh, Sophia, uh, no, but you, um, you, uh, uh, you just bought that actually. So, I mean, can you, can you speak to its quality? To, wait, um, oh, the GPA, the GPA? Castle, the GPA uh, it's, it's very good. It's very good. Uh, from what I've played, I could I could play it for a little bit after I play this for a little while. Uh, I I think it's it's really well done. Uh, I kind of I talk about that in the in the video a little bit, like that we're it's going to be coming out, where I felt like the the Castlevania collection and the Contra collection are they they feel like they're like missing that like some of that m2 flare or like extras and uh that does not feel that way if you feel it feels better i mean it's I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly i mean I, I don't know like it's like missing some stuff but at least you can customize the controls however you want and like and the music thing is is kind of interesting too like i think that's probably the, like one of the most exciting parts about it is being able to hear that like the higher bitrate music um but you know i think for the average person that would be fine to sell the originals but like right. especially with us doing like you know youtube and you know lo often looking at you know original hardware and 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 
and things like that. And sometimes just wanting to show the game, you know, sometimes we just want to show like, here it is. This is what, this is what it looked like, you know? Yeah. And I feel like, you know, us, you know, us being people who presents things in a visual medium like that, like, I feel like we don't want to lose access to that kind of stuff. But like, if you kind of keep a leaner collection, I, right. I, I could definitely see the wisdom in doing that. Yeah, for sure. But you never know when something might come along that'll make you regret it. Like, you know, like, you know, I, I, I definitely, you know, at, at times in the past have thought like, oh, I'm never going to go back to this version. But then like years later, you learn like, oh, that new one actually has like way more input lag or something. You just didn't notice it. Right. Uh, or, uh, or, you know, this one actually, you know, is missing this, this, and that, or, you know, it, it actually, oh, I didn't notice, but it has bad scaling or something like, you know, there's always something. And then when, but with the original version, you can always, you know, scale it like you like, run it on whatever system yeah. that you like, you know. Uh, I don't understand what I... You know, in fact, you know, I, I I I don't I don't think there's any harm in saying it. we we we've, oh. we've talked Let's about see. it briefly in oh, our 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 Discord. Uh, we, we I mean we can't say anything, but you know, obviously there's going to be an analog pocket video. <laughs> uh, and you know you were commenting like oh like you wanted to include the Castlevania Advance collection in this, but it didn't seem worth it just for that. But then you thought, oh, well, actually it might be interesting, like, because it has like that high quality audio mode. Right. Like it might be interesting for, maybe be interesting for analog pocket comparisons. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, so. Oh, um, something's happening here. Are these, are these gonna be the equivalent? Look at this. Looks like the parrot. Oh. Oh, cool. <laughs> I feel like is is surprising you. It's surprising me for sure. Yeah, oh, it, like it's like got the same trajectory as like spitting the eggs. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well, you know, in the first game, remember, the parrot uh, squawks, yeah. for the record, is really small, and it just holds a, holds a, um, uh, holds a flashlight in one level. Right, right. Whereas in uh, two and three, you know, he's, he's larger, and he can carry, he can actually carry the characters. Right, right. Or you can transform into him as you, as you. I think, you know, it's, it has a very similar pixel cell that makes me think of like, the Alex Kinnan Miracle World remake. Uh, or like, like the like the sprite work. I actually didn't like even that. realize, like, I mean, I'm sitting back and, you know, it's inset into this smaller screen. I didn't even realize it was pixelated. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah, if you look. Like, I, 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 thought it was, I, thought looked, I thought it looked more like, you know, high-res art. No, it's... It, it's kind so of it's cool. like it's like a two X pixel scale. Then. It's like really small pixels. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually couldn't tell at this size that it was pixels. Oh, but and you're you... flying amongst the brambles and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty shameless, but there's nothing wrong. It's with pretty it. shameless, but it, I, you know what? It looks like it plays better in Donkey Kong Country Returns. <laughs> 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 I'm so glad you played this after I've already had my Donkey Kong rant. <laughs> I know it's kind of funny though. It's funny that it works out. Oh, right. So yes. Oh man, love me this. Oh cool. You can just you can retry it uh, having the uh, go back in it. Oh, these things are like potatoes. Oh. Are you going away, Sandy? You've been such a good lap buddy for the past however long. I was kind of talking to you about that. 
recently about how, you know, since I, since getting a dog, I've been, I didn't realize that they just kind of like flop all over, like flop where they want to flop and they're ready to, <laughs> to nap. You know, cats are very, have a lot of intent in the way that they move about. But I've noticed that dogs are just like, oh, I'm just going to, I want to lay right here. So I'm just going to do it. Well, I mean, Sandy definitely lays in predictable spots. Right, right, right. But like, I mean, she she has her favorite spots, but uh, you know, and sometimes it's unusual. Like, oh, like, what are you doing laying down here? <laughs> but she definitely has her favorite spots. I mean, this is like straight. Gotcha. Yes, yes. This is like there's like and the a music. Level... Also, kind of sounds like it too. This is almost like a reverse version of like one of the levels in two. In fact, like some like some of these like enemy patterns and pathways like are pretty exact to a particular level in two. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes a game like this is just just what you need, right? Oh uh, yeah, there, there's nothing. You know, you know I, I I say it in the video. I say, you know, I, I can definitely get down with a, a shameless Zelda clone. Mm -hmm. There there are plenty of those. You don't see shameless Donkey Kong Country clones as often though. I'm gonna go back. I didn't realize I could go back here. Often they play a lot more like Donkey Kong Country than, oh. you know, certain actual <laughs> Donkey Kong Country games. A lot of people asking about that, like, oh, what is this? This, this is not Clockwork Aquarium. We, f we finished that one. Now we're exploring this one. Oh, oh look at our little ears. Fine climb. I mean, that even sounds like a level that would be in Donkey Kong Country. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, I can pick up things and throw them, too. Throw, and throwing pops around now. Uh, it's it's definitely it's surprising. It's, it's I was not expecting it to be like this. I was expecting more of a Klonoa type, and I'm not. I, I don't feel disappointed though. Yeah. When you're first dropped into the into the bonus level, it like makes a sound, and it sounds like the beginning of a battle in Final Fantasy. Oh, like the yeah. They, that that actually plays in, uh, at the beginning of uh, several of the battle themes in Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, really? Yeah, it doesn't That's have cool. like the dun 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 dun, but it has the dun. Right. I feel like this kind of looks are like straight up. Straight up like DKC2 style as well. Yeah. You know, maybe the people who made this were disappointed with Donkey Kong Country Returns also. You know, I, I, I've been dying to, like, I, I, I would love... They, they honestly probably either have no opinion or... Uh, or respect them, like the, the, the you know, the platonic people. Like, I really, like, want to ask them, like... What do you think like, of it? Is, is ukulele, like, in the possible way, is it, like, a response? Like, 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 oh, they didn't do it right. Here's how you do it. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I'm, not, wish, I'm not sure I how well... Ukulele did, unfortunately. It seemed like it dropped in price pretty quick there. Yeah. I mean, I asked John how he thought it did, and he he, he seems pretty optimistic about how it did. It is a it is fantastic. It is a really good game. Like, 
I, I like the first ukulele more than most people do. Um, but like Impossible Layer is just such a more polished and better put together game in general. Like I, I never would have thought of them repurposing um, those characters for like a DKC style game, but I'm so glad they did. Mm -hmm. It works really well. You know, I, I, I guess I hadn't seen that Platonic's been kind of getting into into publishing too. They they call it Friends of Platonic. Have you seen that? Oh, I didn't know that. I thought they were like, I thought that was like what Team Seventeen is or something like that. They published. They published some of Platonic stuff. I don't, maybe Platonic's going to self publish going forward, but like, um, like that lights demon on, turf off. game that came out recently. I, I was, was that, was Those it, like remember when did announce they were doing a physical of that? Of demon turf? Demon turf? What demon it? turf. It's, it's got this really weird, but kind of interesting art style. It's like, it's like a 3D platformer, but the characters like kind of have this like almost Paper Mario like sort of look to them. It, it's it looks weird, but I'm I'm intrigued. Like I'm par partially just intrigued because it's like oh, Platonic. Like I like what they do, so maybe they publish games that I would also like. Right. So this seems like like it's like the oh shoot, wrong button, like the red light green light or whatever was in. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> oh man, that you know I, I I've I've probably told uh, told that story several times. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I've probably told it. But I, I don't know if I've told it on a stream before. Um, you know, the, the, there's like this secret in in that level where. If you, as soon as you enter the level, if you go immediately left, mm -hmm. um, uh, it like warps you to like almost the end of the level. And oh right, I, I... the first time I went into the level, like as soon as I saw uh, the monsters, I just like noped to the left immediately <laughs> and like and it's almost like they wanted like, you to like, like i like almost thinking like it was going to like take me out of the level because mm -hmm. like i i mean it's it's only in the second world so i mean i you know it's not like i played that much um so like I, I didn't necessarily know like I was like oh like at first like the screen went to black and I was like oh I can exit the level and then like no it like then it took me you know out of the level and uh, and uh, it was it was a long time like a very long time before I ever like played through. <laughs> That, the level without taking the shortcut. It was a very long time because it was just like, like it, it was like scary to me. Like when I was, I mean, I was ten when the Super Nintendo when when Donkey Kong Country came out. I was ten, um, and I that was the same Christmas I got my Super Nintendo. You know, so I, I I got Donkey Kong Country day one with my Super. Nintendo. And uh, there's definitely a flow to this that I think that you'd like. Oh yeah. I mean, it seems to and be optimized for like just keeping it going. Just kind of running, running and rolling through. And yeah. It's, that's what I love about about Donkey Kong Country. Um, but anyway, uh, like you know, so I mean, I, I hadn't been into it for years by the time I was ten. But like, you know, what I was like ages four to six, I was like way into Teddy Ruxpin. You know, there, was, there was a couple of people who commented on the Teddy Ruxpin that was in uh, 
in that room that the projectors are in at my parents' yeah. house from the projectors episode. Um, and uh, uh, there, there were these creatures that called mud blups. Anyone, anyone uh, in what? Oh, in Teddy Ruxpin. In Teddy Ruxpin, there were these, there were these, yeah, these monsters yeah. called mud blups. That sounds mud really blups. familiar. Look, look, look I probably because I've told this. I'm sure I've told this story before. Um. Uh, so look, look, look that up. Like it, the 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 Kremlins and the Stop and Go Station look like lizard versions of the mud blups. And I, I, I like, you know, ages four to six, I thought mud blups were terrifying. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, look them up. I don't know. I, I honestly think they're kind of scary, especially from like the the uh, live action puppet thing. Hmm. Uh, they're, they're pretty scary looking. Uh, and... Uh, Uh, so I, I, you know, that I, I think that definitely played on my mind when I oh. got to the stop and go station. It just like brought back this fear of something like, you know, four years ago that I was scared of, uh, you know, and I was just like, ah, oh, and I went the other way. And, you know, I always thought that was such a scary level. So is the swimming? The swimming doesn't feel like it's the same. Oh, the swimming looks like it might be return style. Does, do you go in the direction you, you press? No. You just, you are constantly going towards the surface and you dive. Oh, okay. So it's not, it's not like returns either then. So it's its own thing. I, I've always really liked the feel though of uh, games that do have like where you when you're swimming you automatically float upwards and you're all in yeah. like you you press down to go down but you by default flow upwards like like how when you're holding like an item in Super Mario World like I don't know I like I can't explain it but something about that has always felt okay. satisfying until you become until you put on the shark mask Ooh, oh, now, now, now you can oh now that looks like return style or like you just hold a direction. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be accelerate. Return style. Hate it. <laughs> but I mean, do you feel you wouldn't like it in this? I mean, I mean no, do you, do you I mean, not like do you not like the swimming in it? Is that, no, I mean, is the that a problem? In, we're in, the swimming in like tropical freeze is, is, is fine. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's clearly better with an analog stick and it's otherwise a game I would prefer to play with a D-pad. So it either forces you to go back and forth or just accept playing with an analog stick. Oh yeah, that's something I, I run into, you know, often and something that, you know, as I was doing the episode, like, you know, something I would check several times is like, Okay, you can play this with the D-pad, but does it also have like any sort of analog movement or any, you know, can you change the speed depending on how much you tilt or can you move in 360 degrees if you do use a stick, you know? Mm -hmm. there, there, you know, there are, you know, an interesting case I think is like Yoshi's Crafted World um, because it's a game that where your character movement is completely digital, but... What's different about it compared to other Yoshi games is you freely move your target, your egg targeting cursor, which I don't like as much as the traditional way of where it just moves back and forth and you're, it's more of a timing thing when you throw it. Mm -hmm. um, because you can't move while aiming the egg because you're, once you start aiming, you're either D-pad or stick movement, whichever way you're choosing to move the character, automatically switches over to moving the egg target um and targeting the egg feels better with a stick but moving yoshi feels better with the d-pad so it's and jumping between the two during gameplay doesn't feel good you know like you yeah. want to like so it's like you need to pick one and really the right choice is stick because aiming the egg does not work very well with the d-pad 
Um, so, you know, the compromise I kind of found was that the N64 controller is <laughs> amazing. Like that, that's actually one of the best, uh, uh, one of the best uh, surprises for me with the N64 controller was like honestly that is like now my favorite controller for Yoshi's Crafted World. <laughs> I, I, I felt, like I thought the game I thought Yoshi's Crafted World was okay but now like I almost kind of feel like I, I would have liked it a lot more <laughs> like I'm kind of like oh I, I kind of want to go back and like you know collect all the things on it now, right. just because it's it feels so fun to play with the N64 controller I think that there's a lot of cool things that people might be surprised about. Oh God, I feel like we're spoiling a lot just talking about. But, but listen, like, like it is like over a hundred. Like yeah, the whole like the, like the title is going to be like a hundred and twenty Switch games played with the or tested with the Switch Online controllers. I mean, we we don't know how many there is. Honestly, I really wanted to. I think we should say played with because I mean it's not I mean I, 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 played is a a more appealing word than tested I think and uh, I don't know I don't know I mean we played them we played them you know some of them is not ideal but like most things like like we could have shown like there's so many games that we could have shown. That's just like, well, I already know that like Breath of the Wild is just like not even going to play, you know? Right. We, but like we test things like we test. There are a lot of things in the episode. It's like, like, oh, I can't remember for sure if there's any reason that you couldn't use the N64 controller or you couldn't use a, uh, a Jess controller or whatever. Like, and then you try and it's like, oh, or it couldn't. But you still decide to include it in the episode because just because. Um, this is like the pufferfish boss in, in three, except uh, not underwater. I'm curious to see if it's going to be like three hits and dead. He's an urchin. What's going to happen here? Okay. Yeah, I do wish they put Crafted World to switch. That that is by far the best. Uh, Yoshi game since Island. By far. Well, you mean uh, Woolly World. Woolly World, yeah. yeah. Zane's dad was saying I liked Crafted World, but liked Woolly World more. I wish they'd pour it to the Switch. You know, the 3DS version is a lot better than I expected, though. Uh, I have that. I, I haven't really played it. Yeah, I... I, I, like uh, I, I mean, I haven't played much of it either. Yeah, I, I got it for really cheap as well. Like, I mostly got it because it's like, well... Like, I just wanted to get it because it's like, well, what if I want to make a video about, like, all the Yoshi games someday or something like that, you know? Yeah. You know, it just seems like a good thing to have. And, like, I, I was not expecting it to be 60 frames per second, and it is. It's it's really good. I was I was quite impressed. I mean, obviously, the Wii U version is better, but I was, I was surprised how good it is. Uh, Scepter Sever, we finished, uh, I finished Clockwork Aquario already. That was like the first hour of the stream. Ozzy in the Wild Masks, and it is straight up Donkey Kong Country, and it looks delightful. Oh, we got a little airship. Ooh. You know, Teddy Ruxpin's where my love of airship started, too. <laughs> I had the Teddy Ruxpin airship toy. Interesting. So they're going straight to like the Frozen level, like Frozen World second. Like that's kind of not something you see very often. Oh, that's that's cool, actually. Ooh. I'm sure I can think of another game that did it that quickly if I thought of it. Is is the is the snow level the second level in in the original ukulele? I feel like it might be. <laughs> you know, on the on the on the uh, on the the mix it up uh, 
notifications that we use for the yeah Twitter streams on backloggery. Mm -hmm. We have when bots appear in the chat uh, and are, are banned. There's um, drum got this clip from an old NES commercial of is, is like this guy like raising the zapper and like his girlfriend is like all excitedly looking over his shoulder. <laughs> he fires the zapper and you know they put a he added a you know you know a duck hunt sound effect and then uh it like keeps a count like over the course of the stream so if there was like multiple bots like then it has like the killer instinct you know tumble, you know yeah play it adds the it adds to the uh to the the kill count you know so <laughs> if there's like three bots in the stream we, we can get a little, little tumble going One thing I didn't like all that much about the original ukulele was like the the book expansion concept was a good idea, but like it also kind of made me feel like oh like what's the point in like really exploring this level until it's the complete version of. The so I like didn't really have a concept. Yeah, so you're just like rushing much... to, to get the to get further till you can, you know, you have to you have to progress through the story or whatever through the game to like open up the levels more, right? So you're kind you of rushing it? at first. I, I I have not played it now. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like rushing it necessarily, but it's just like kind of this sense of aim aimlessness to an extent. Like it's like. What, what should I be doing right now? Like, what's worth doing? Because, like, the, the level, like, changes so much once you... I mean, it's not like things go away, but it's also, like, you might be, like, focusing on something that's kind of just a dead end in, until later. And it's just kind of like, oh, like, what's what's the point in really exploring this level until I can expand the world? Right. Yeah. Later in the game, I guess it's less of a problem because then once you've expanded earlier levels, you can then collect enough stuff to expand the later levels really quickly. It's an interesting idea. I get why they did it, but what, what I think is, you know, what they did in uh, Ukulele in the Impossible Layer, which is really cool, is the the levels have these like alternate versions uh, that are impacted by what you do on the overworld. So like, oh. as an example, okay. like you uh, might freeze a pond and then like, you know, a level that was not an ice level, like now you can play a version of that level that is an ice level. Or you like turned on this like, giant fan right and then you know now there's like a gusty version of the level and like there's you know different things to collect i thought that was that was a a, a more successful way of kind of increasing the content of each level because they were they became two sort of distinct changed versions of it or like a flooded version of the level or, or there's like one instance where like this like magic pot that's full of honey like spills over onto the book that has the level in it. And then there's like a sticky version of the level. <laughs> you know, it has been so long since I have seen a sprite do an edge, an edge balancing thing, animation, like a new I, one. You don't, you just, you don't see it anymore. I, I guess I haven't really thought of that necessarily. Like, uh. You know, I the, can't think of the last new game that I played that did it. We've uh, we, we've been we've been talking about it a lot, but you know, Donkey Kong Country I feel like was the first one that I saw. Probably Sonic was the first you saw. Yeah, Sonic was definitely the first one I saw. Although you know, Mickey Mouse probably Castle of Illusion actually mm -hmm. was. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was such a cool touch when I saw it. Like, yeah, it was, it was something I always loved to see.
see I think this like tropical freeze has definitely been less than sixty dollars because I would not have repurchased a game that I have complicated feelings for at sixty dollars. <laughs> It, it was definitely for. It was like on sale for like forty five or something, uh, some time ago. Like several, I don't know, two or so years ago, probably. What was that? Is there oh, an idle animation? Look at That's this. Awesome. It's like yeah, there's an idle animation. I, mean, I feel like most games have idle animations now. I remember when that was a yeah. novelty too, you know? Yeah. And Sonic is the first idol animation that I remember. Does she that, Probably. Yeah, like, oh, she does. Probably the same for me. <laughs> like, unless you count, like, Kirby's eyes blinking. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't think of it like that, but I could see how. Oh, shoot. How about that? And these crossbows are obviously the, the barrel blasts. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you do have unlimited lives, though. And that's, that's, that's fine. Oh, of course. She... Okay, so there's no... If you hold down Y, she doesn't just start running. She always... Oh, the... I thought I thought it was a he. Um, I think I think they look like a she, I to me at least. But maybe maybe they are neither. Maybe it's like not something that maybe she, you're not I, not even supposed to think about. It. Yeah, I cannot seem to. To do this far correctly. What is the funky mode in Tropical Freeze? Isn't it supposed to be easier or something? Maybe I'd like it. <laughs> the, ga the, ga the game is already not quite right, so why not make it just more different? I mean, that, that, that's why I said the, say in the video too. Is it's like the tease of try even attempting to play it with a Super Nintendo controller just like makes me all the more mad that it doesn't play like the Super Nintendo games. And like, mm. at least when I play it with a pro controller, like it's a little easier to put my mind in like a different place. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, it's not the same. I know it's not the same. I still have a hard time with it, but, uh, but like even attempting to play with the Super Nintendo controller, I mean the mechanics are just too different. They're just too different. Got it. <laughs> oh, oof. That worked out all right. All the sidekick powers and more health, so you can play like a normal DKC game. But having health is not like a normal DKC game. <laughs> <laughs> and see, you know, Cranky Kong is in it. And Cranky Kong has like a Scrooge McDuck style pogoing. <laughs> like, that's great. It's a great idea. I sure, I sure wish, I sure wish I liked the game more. I gotta That's run the great. Desert. There's so much good, so much good to that game. If only I could enjoy the way it actually controls. Just can't get over it. Metroid Dread with the N64 controller. No, see, I mean, see, that's an example of one where we just, we just don't even, didn't even try. Uh, cause it's just, there's just so, that game uses a lot of buttons, a lot of buttons. I mean, that's a game that I would have liked to have tried with the Super Nintendo controller, but 
You can't even move with the D-pad, which is like, I get why because of the aiming, but it is not, uh, I mean, Samus's movement, I wish they gave your the ability to just walk slowly with a, a shallow tilt of the stick. Because if if you're forced to use an analog stick, then you may as well have that kind of control. But she she only moves at one speed. The control is just fine. It's just that the level designs are not typical of Donkey Kong Country. I mean, see, that's the thing. Like, th there's definitely a lot of set piece levels, and those kind of annoy me to some extent. Like, they, they're definitely flashy, but I feel they are difficult to parse sometimes um but see like i can't even really get into the level design of like oh what's different what's wrong with the level design what's i shouldn't say what's wrong necessarily but uh it's so hard to really judge the level design when i just i can't even get over the controls you know, because the, the controls and the level design together is what makes Donkey Kong Country what it is, because they are just they just fit each other like a glove. Uh, it's just it's just it's perfect, pure platforming controls and perfect, pure platforming level design. It's just so good. So pure and good, and I just can't assess how that fits together in the retro games, the retro studios games. That is. Yes, I'm still talking about Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> I was gonna say. What are you doing? Or wasn't there something else you were gonna try uh, that we were curious about trying? I, I, go, um, I was gonna try a battle axe. Battle axe? Yeah. Well, there was something else we were going we were going to try. weren't you going? Well, didn't you tell someone in the chat like, "Oh, we'll we'll try that before the stream is over." Uh, let me see. It kills me that the Super Nintendo controller doesn't have a home button on it. Like that is like the thing. Yeah, I wish they'd make another one, but then it'd be fifty dollars. <laughs> it'd be worth it <laughs> just to have that home button on it. Yeah. It's definitely a disappointment, but I mean, you know, it, it doesn't stop me from using it. I mean, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's definitely better than like the eight bit do. Oh, Castlevania. That's what it was. Oh yeah. Castlevania advance. Yeah. Yeah. You were going to show it to us. Where is it? There it is. So, what controller do you use in it? Oh, I say in the video, I was like, you know, there's... The Super Nintendo controller is the perfect controller for it. Don't even bother using anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is, is any... I mean, yeah, the r &L buttons aren't great, but are is the NES controller feasible or or not? I mean, it, it is feasible because of the tiny little L and R buttons, but, like, I mean, for stuff like Harmony of Dissonance, where you're going to hit that little, tiny little button every time you want to dash... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, that, that, I mean, that's exactly what I talked about in, um, uh, talking about the Mega Man Zero and ZX Legacy Collection. Like, you know, I, I like the idea of using the NES Joy Cons for the, um, uh, for, for GBA games just because they technically have the same number of buttons as a GBA. You Does know? anyone have a preference of what I should play? A, B, start, select, R, L. That uh, Circle of the Moon artwork is really interesting because the stuff that's like to the left of him like is not on the American box. I feel like I've not seen like the left side of that art before. I'm very glad that M2 went back to doing straight up black borders. It's not like oh, that. It's thank, not that gray thank gradient or anything. Thank goodness. Oops.
Uh, Arya Sorrow is the only one out of all three of these that I've actually finished, I think. I think I got... I didn't finish this one for one reason or another, because... I think it was just at a time where, like, I just couldn't see it very well. <laughs> it's just hard to play. Well, bro, did you get it near release then? Yeah, I got it on launch day. Yeah. I mean, this this one is definitely weird it's, because it's, it's pretty tough. Yeah. Well, it's 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 stiffer than the other games. Yeah. So, you know, the way you move is a, is a lot. It's 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 not as fluid feeling of a game. You like move really slow unless you run, but I, I I like it. I think I think a lot of people don't, or you know they used to like it, but they just can't go back to it. I, I could definitely understand that. I mean, I haven't played through it in a long, long time. Um, but I I I, I mean, this game like. GBA launch day was a great day because like I just I remember it's so it's so funny to think about it now but I often think about how I, I was so scared for the future of 2D gaming because <laughs> like I loved you know seeing 3D take shape like you know and 64 was too real to be real. Like I felt like I was, I was witnessing the future unfold in front of my very eyes with, uh, you know, N64 and you know, some of the stuff on PlayStation. Uh, it it was just it was it was it was so impressive to me. But at the same time, I was you know very worried like. Like 2D games are, are going away. And you know, if the I I love Game Boy a lot more like the original Game Boy a lot more now than I did at the time that uh you know Game Boy Advance came out. Like I was kind of tired of Game Boy. Um and yeah, hey, retroactively I've come to love really love the i mean I, I probably love game boy more than gba now oh yeah honest. yeah but uh it, it, at the time i definitely uh was tired of game boy and seeing this like this like super nintendo tier game and generally, yeah, GBA often had a hard time hitting actual Super Nintendo. Yeah, I, I mean, this is this isn't this doesn't look 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 like a, a Super Nintendo game. No, but at the at the time, <laughs> it, it it was you know it was it was the first Castlevania or Castle Metroidvania Castlevania after since Symphony of the Night. Yeah, and I think it, yeah. was, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, but but I mean, but my point is like. You know, getting this and getting F Zero, even though you know, again, that's not a really a great F Zero game. No. But still, like it was proof of concept. Like, and I just remember this sense of relief and excitement playing GBA on day one. Like, oh my gosh! Like, like super, like there is a new system that can support like Super Nintendo style games like that. That is like what this system is going to specialize in, you know? And that was like so exciting to me because not a lot of people were making new games like that on consoles. Right. And I, it was such a relief. And I remember when the DS was coming about. So you see, when I walk here, you can see it's like, it's, it's softening, it's interpolating. I mean, but I can still see like a little shimmer. Maybe see a little, but I don't know if it's just because of how it's scaled on the stream. I mean, I can if, you see do, if you do pixel perfect, you don't. The walking speed in this game is great for detecting shimmer. Uh, let's see. Well, no, you kind of. I mean, maybe it's just the way that the. Maybe it's just how it is on my TV. I wish I got F Zero Climax before it was expensive.
Uh, oh, I, I talked to you about this. I guess I was talking about it like in the the chat with with Duke and Dave about how I like I had this idea of just handing my kids a Game Boy with with Tetris in it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like where it's like that's the game that's in it, and just like you know, just oh, le like letting them like you know, like that be the only thing that they can can try on it. You know what I mean? Like the only thing like there's the play and just see how they how they take to it. I guess like I, it's just kind of an interesting idea that I think you know with, with a million games that they can play like in, in Roblox, which is like their favorite thing to play, like. You know, Tetris is kind of this great equalizer. I feel like, like it's such a simple game. Oh for yeah, I mean to play. because that was that was the game that like, you know, technically Tetris on the NES was my dad's game. You know, right? I mean, that's what like, I mean. That, that was that was what parents played because you're right. It was an equalizer in the sense of, you know, you didn't have to really be a gamer to get Tetris or to right. be good at. Exactly, exactly. So I, I'm, I just kind of want to see what happens if I just like sit them down with like a Game Boy Color. I ordered uh, Tetris DX because I'm not gonna make them try to see on a screen. That you know, I, I'll, I'll be very curious. You know, I, I don't remember specifically like learning like, okay, what do you do in Tetris? But like, I, I've often thought like, is it really that intuitive? Like. The idea of making a line and then it disappears, like, I don't know, like, it's always seemed a little, like, abstract to me. See, it doesn't seem like it to me, because, like, that is, when you see those pieces falling, like, that's naturally, like, what your brain wants to do. So you know what? You want to fill I, in I those gaps. Perhaps part of, of that sort of disconnect in my head. I remember when I, I had not played Tetris, but I heard, I heard it described and I remember very distinctly someone said, you're building a castle. Hmm. Which is like, I feel like maybe they thought that because they have like the Russian castles on like the title screen. Right, right. Like, I, I feel like, I had, I, I feel like that kind of confused me on my first time playing the game, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I mean, if you're building a castle, like you want to make it look like an interesting shape, right? And you don't necessarily want to make interesting shapes in Tetris. You want to make very neat shapes that will clear easily. The blocks will slot into and so I, I, well, I don't specifically remember learning like, oh, the goal is to clear lines. I definitely, I, I do remember like that whole thing about like being told what you're building a castle. And this was before I played the game. I just had heard of it. So I said like, oh, like, you're building, like I, I want to say that we got Tetris because like some guy at my dad's work I played it and loved it. Really? And he like, I think told him like, oh, you know, you, you know, you, you need to play this game. It's great. And I, I feel like I remember, I, 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 I think I almost remember like my mom, me and my mom, like actually like buying it at the store and like we gave it to him for Christmas. But I mean, he didn't play it much. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. My, uh, you know, I, I gave, like, it was a long time ago. Like, it was when the, when the, uh, oh my gosh, it was even longer ago than the DSi. I gave my mom my DS Lite, I think, when I got the DSi. Wait, Tetris? Did you get, like, the DS Tetris? Well, not at first. I, I had it. I had it, and I, I okay. kept it. Um, but I got her like Brain Age, and well, maybe I did give her Tetris right away. I can't remember. But 
she really got into brain age and uh, eventually she was telling me about this this game Virus Buster on there and she was like oh it's, this is great it's so great and she was telling me about it and then when I she showed it to me when I went over to my parents house one time I was like oh it's Dr. Mario <laughs> but it's Dr. Mario and you like move the pill like it, they're the, it's like a they're much larger pills and the play field you know doesn't have as many spaces on it um, but you move them with the stylus Oh, and man. I tried to get her into Tetris after that. And she just could not deal with the button controls. Like, hmm. like everything was just like, you know, her experience had been touchscreen, right? Right. And she just couldn't, she did not like button controls. She just couldn't really learn that. So she never really took to Tetris. She did get interested in playing uh, New Super Mario Brothers, though, because when uh, when my uh, cousin's son stayed at um, my parents' house for a week several years ago, he had it, mm -hmm. and I, I think she she tr she tried to play it with him a little bit because I think you can do like a like a single card. Play. Oh, yeah, just like it downloads it to the other one. Yeah, and, you know, she had my DS, so, you know, they... And she was, like, she was interested in playing Mario after that. And so... So she said, asked if she could... I mean, she asked if she could borrow New Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> but I, I don't think she got very far at it. Yeah, I think it's, it's kind of tough towards the end. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, I don't think she got more than a couple of levels into it. Yeah. But she was borrowing that from me for a while. Well, I, I'll be interested to see how it goes with if my kids like, get into Tetris. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just curious to see because Tetris it did not click with me until like not that long ago. Yeah. Well, you, you know, like I never spent the time. And you know, like I could, like I have Tetris, Tetris effect, but even like even my wife who like who likes Tetris, but she likes, I mean, she doesn't play it very much, but she saw me playing Tetris effect one time, and she's like, like I, I can't even understand what's going on. Like it's just like there's just too much visual stimulation that I it's hard for me to keep track of like what is happening. You're not really supposed to really pay ultra close attention to. <clears throat> All well, the effect, like the well, yeah. game, I, is so simple. It's just—it's more just about the ambience. That totally, all totally. Of that but but I would not recommend it as somebody's very first Tetris game because mm. it's just there's a lot to take in. I think. Um, you know, I can't remember if I got Puyo Puyo Tetris or Tetris Effect first. I think Puyo Puyo Tetris, and. I feel like, you know, kind of similar to you, like, I, I always thought Tetris was fine, but I, like, I never really grasped the love of it. Uh, you know, I always liked Puyo Puyo, or, you know, Kirby's Avalanche, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tetris Attack, and, uh, Warriors Woods, like I liked games like those much more than Tetris. Um, and I, you know, I, I got like Tetris DS, you know, when that came out, and yeah, it was it was fine, but I didn't get super into it. But yeah, like that time frame when like I got Puyo Puyo Tetris, and then I think it was the same year Tetris Effect came out. You know, I got that. Pretty much as pretty pretty quickly after getting my PSVR. In fact, I might I I think I like I think I like ordered it online the PSVR online and then like went to Best Buy and bought. Uh, and that that is that is definitely where like 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 I definitely had not real not honestly not just like a Tetris revival 
but like just kind of puzzle game revival in general because i remember like i used to enjoy like renting puzzle games you know i rented you know before i owned them i i rented kirby's avalanche and uh uh uh, Tetris Attack and Warriors Woods and several other puzzle games. Like it, it was, it was a genre that I I considered myself to enjoy. And you know, over the years, like I just kind of lost touch with with the falling blocks puzzler. You know, yeah. and like now, like in the past, you know, three or so years, I feel like it's a genre that I like really like again. You know, with Puyo Puyo, and you know, I got a, uh, I got, um, I got a uh, uh, Super Puzzle Fighter Two a couple years ago. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's definitely something I've, I've come back around to. I'm glad. Well, I'll let you know how it goes. It's supposed to show up on Tuesday. That was the first game I bought on eBay in like over a year. Really? Yeah. Good good job. <laughs> good job. You know, I, I had a big gap in eBay purchases at some point this year, but... Uh, you know, no, it was the game that I bought before that. Uh, the last game that I bought was Silent Hill uh, HD Collection for the PS3. <laughs> so, like, this one which, seller which had, like... Version? What? Which version? The PS3 version. Oh, gosh. I, I have no idea what inspired me to do it, but I was like, oh, you know, you never know, and it might come in handy. And there was, like, one seller that had, like, new one, new copies of it. And I wish that it was the the 360 version because the 360 version is backwards compatible i wonder if that's even did that version get fixed though well or was it only the ps3 version that got fixed well uh i mean i i, 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 I think fixed. that i think that the uh is only a ps3 version that got fixed because that back then microsoft had a like a policy where they charged, I think, after the first, after your first patch. Like your first patch is free, and then you have to pay pay for like having additional patches. And they they didn't think it was worth it. Uh, but you know, you could argue that having a backwards compatible version of it is probably may have fixed it to some extent, but probably not. But yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what. The I almost bought it because it was, it. it's, it was for sale on on Xbox Live for seven dollars. I almost bought it. It probably still is. I, I, I definitely went er, er, earlier this year, though. I definitely went through a couple of. Uh, <laughs> I'm couple of... Chris. I'm reading the. I'm reading the chat. I'm trying to. I was just focusing on not dying until I died there. I, I saw your bit about the Tetris is a, a thinking man's game, and I guess that's why I preferred Columns at the time. <laughs> I, I play I played a lot of Columns. You act like you I, don't I, really like Columns now, though. No, I don't really care about it. Yeah. I, I, I did get Columns 3, like, two years ago, but I have not played a lot of it. But I, I mean, you know, it seems like a fine enough game. So you were describing, I, I, <laughs> you were describing the uh, scaling in this to me. Uh, yeah. Like, so kind of, I kind of think my suspicion is correct, but I'm not positive. I think that they're doing 4X vertical and 5X horizontal for the pixel perfect. Which I think is it is why. Well, that's right here. Yeah, this is it right here. So, but if you if you do like the uh, if you go to standard, then it's skinnier. Uh, but when you're playing right. handheld, then pixel perfect is skinnier and right. And standard because I bet is, they're using I bet they're using square pixels in uh, in that case. Yeah, I think they're. But I think. 
I think four vertical, five horizontal is better uh, or is better than square pixels for Super Nintendo, in my opinion. It is a little wide, but if you're if you're not interpolating, I would I would I would go with that versus square pixels. That's just that's just me. One thing I like about this version it has that back flip on it. I can't really do it. There it is. Oh, yeah. Isn't it a little technical? If I recall, I forget how you do. Yeah, it. Yeah, that. But yeah, oh, I don't, always don't thought... you like don't you hit like jump again like when you're near the ground or something? Or it's you gotta hit it. You gotta hit it twice really quick. I think. Is, are you and sure I... that the PC Engine doesn't have that? I'm pretty sure that it doesn't. I can't remember for sure. I'm sure there's somebody who can tell us exactly. Like, I mean, I have certainly have played it enough that I'd be able to tell if it. I should know. Brilliant says backflip was also in Rondo. Oh. I don't remember if it's done differently. I, I had a feeling it was. Okay. Well, maybe maybe it is done differently, or maybe I just didn't know how to do it, it in the first place in that version. It's it's so weird that this version is on this collection, but I'm I'm glad it exists somewhere. I know what what I said. I think I said it during that when I was like a guest on the Digital Foundry like weekly thing. Is that I think if they're gonna do like a handheld collection, it's a real missed opportunity to like not include the the PSP version of this. Yeah, like it just—it just makes so much sense for what they were trying to do with it. I wonder if that's really an M2's wheelhouse, though. Like, have they have they done like HD versions of 3D games? Yeah, the first HD game that they did was one. Was that um that one Konami shooter? That was their first HD game. So, uh, wait. I have, like, the, uh, the, the sequel for it. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, right in the pit. Um, that always bothered me. I feel like it looks like it's like a different kind of ground right there. Right there. Like, it looks yeah. like you walk on that, kind of. Uh, what is it called? Uh, God, I have it. It's right there. So the... The Gradius. Is it in the MC documentary? Yeah. Um, Odomedius. Odomedius. Okay. Uh, excellent. Excellent is the one I have, I think. They want to get a US release, but it has so much DLC for it that I basically I never played it. Off the top of my head, what it, what it looks like, honestly. But yeah, like an HD version of the PSP game would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and I think that was a missed opportunity. Like, I, I know a, a lot of people don't like that version, but I, I, I kind of like it. Didn't Igarashi do that one though? Didn't he like direct like that that remake? Well, I don't know if he directed it, but he definitely produced it. I mean, he produced everything that was Castlevania. Yeah. Like that. But when you think I, about I, you it. Know, it's it is it's kind of weird. It's just like a lot of that stuff from like certain creators on the PSP is just like a, like the 3D remakes of of games is just gonna like get forgotten. Yeah, well, I mean, or you just know, like there were there were things like the uh, the the you know the PSP emulations on uh, on PS4. You know, like you've got like. Uh, Loco Roco and uh, the PSP version of Parappa the Rapper. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and hey, that's how we're pretty positive. That's how uh, Rondo of Blood and uh, Symphony of the Night ended up on PS4. Just emulating them. You know, so those were actually pretty good, but it's, 
Sony has not really been that interested in revisiting old games lately. Yeah. Or at least, you know, really doing much with them. <laughs> but, uh... I like landed an invisible platform there. Yeah, it just seems like it makes sense to port that. And... Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Sony is like ashamed of like low poly stuff now. But like, just a straight up like but Sony, high res I... version of that, I would love it. I mean, Konami would be doing it. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. But like, there's still an opportunity to do it with that PSP emulator, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird that this game is on here, but it's like it's it's good that it, ex it exists somewhere, you know. Oh, it's, it's actually one of the few games that I have uh, the Super Nintendo games that I have on the 3DS Virtual Console. Um, oh, th this is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they came out with some on the third on 3DS. Yeah. 3DS and the, the Wii U. Nintendo 3DS. Right, right. Because they, you know, I guess, and Capcom re released, like, a, several games that were just, uh, were not available on any other virtual console previously, like Demon's Crest and Mega Man 7, stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I, I got it mostly because, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I got it just especially to include in that Dracula X video. Uh, yeah. And I was, I was honestly, the interpolation on the Super Nintendo Virtual Console on 3DS, like for a screen that is 240p, <laughs> the fact that it even, they even attempted interpolation, I think is pretty impressive. Uh, and it's it's not that bad considering. I mean, yeah. is, is it amazing? No, but you're working with very few pixels. I'm I'm very impressed that they even tried. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna play this. This is on the episode. This is like <laughs> I I think this is like two bucks. And uh it's just like I, such... I see that uh, I you know I never bought that that download fire emblem did you did you try that with the nes controller? yeah it, it works perfectly is it in the episode yeah that's so funny because that's a game you would think i would cover and not you i well i didn't even think about it like some of these things that i just did because i didn't even, i forgot that i had them what the heck is alpaca ball uh, i don't know like somebody like it does a code there's a download code that was sent <laughs> uh like i put like the, did this code of princess ex which is something that was kind of a late decision to do. Oh, isn't that like it's kind of it's like it's like a DS game, isn't it? It is, and it got ported to uh, to the Switch. But you know, it's like it's like a total rip off of Guardian Heroes. I'm like, oh, can I play this with the the Genesis Six button? Interesting. And yeah, you can. So, I yeah, you can kind of see like a lot of stuff that I covered. I had no idea that's how that played. Yeah. Yeah, it's but like, yeah. Is, it, is it is it pretty good? Uh, it's OK. It's OK. It's uh, I don't know. It's it's funny. It's like funny because like the main character is like nearly naked all the time and, and she's the only one that doesn't even notice. I, I do. I do remember that from uh, when the DS version came out. Yeah. That's probably the reason people. Were I think that, I think that that is going to be like something that people are going to be interested in. What game? Say, well, <laughs> well it, I mean, no, I, this I, episode. In this episode, there should be no what games unless people are watching the beginning of the episode where I show a few games before we talk about them. Yeah. And yes, Toki, the Toki remake is in it. You better be believe it. Night Trap is it's in not, it. It's also, it's not even the only game in the episode with the name Toki in the title. What? 
It's not. Koki. You haven't watched my sections yet. I mean, I've watched most of them, but when I feel inspired. Did you? Yeah, I I did this. I put this in here because I don't know why. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to throw this in there. Throw in the SNK heroines. You know, I saw that Mushihimi Sama. It's it's ending on limited run today. Actually, it's, I think it's ending in like fifty four minutes. And you have you not gotten it? I've not gotten it. You know, I I I went there. Uh, when when I got the email, you know, the ending today email. Yeah, it's forty dollars. Mm. Like, it was like that was a no brainer for me, but I I know like. I, like, I if it was thirty, I would have gotten it just because of how much you love that game. Mm-hmm. But like forty was a little too much for me to spend on something that like I I don't know if I would really even like that much. I'm just not really that into you know bullet hell style shooters. Mm-hmm. So this is, I put this in the episode because I bought it, it was like $2 at one point. I thought it looked really good in screenshots, but in motion, I feel as though it's just really, it's just really, really crisp looking. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. You know what that, uh, that map with the, um, with all the stars on it look, remind me of? What? Is Lamborghini American Challenge? Oh, <laughs> like if you play the the regular game mode that you know isn't the Super Scope mode, uh, like it's Maybe got this a... like map, and you can like click on these different uh, levels and like challenge these different racers. Like you know, looking at this, like you know, I know you're obviously thinking Outrun, but I. I kind of wonder if the inspiration might be more the Lamborghini. Lamborghini challenge, maybe. No, well, because that game was actually on like you know Amiga and a whole like it was on a bunch of things. Yeah, actually, so like I bet like like I bet people like with a lot of nostalgia for like European computers and stuff like that. Uh, like I, I like I you know when I I I was like oh this game's kind of impressive I, I you know I mentioned it in our chat with, with John and Adi. Mm-hmm. And Adi was like, oh yeah, I played the Amiga version back in the day. <laughs> uh, but you see what I mean? This, this game, it just looks real crisp. It just, it's yeah, just, it just like, it's, it's very clean. Simple, like, all of like these just like billboard uh, you know, cactuses and stuff, but it, like, it, it looks cool. Yeah. Like, it's, it looks cool. It doesn't look great. But it just, it's just... It's comfy. Yeah. It, and it... I don't know. It's it's simple, but but fun. Super it's flat like, cars. The American yeah. Challenge was on and Super that's, that's NES. Okay. Uh, Super NES, Amiga CD32, Game Boy, and MS-DOS. Uh, I, I bet it was relatively popular on those computer platforms. And that's probably why the game has mouse support too, you know, on mm-hmm. Superman. I, I put this in the video. It's like, it's only for like 25 seconds or something like that. CGQ said, not sure that crisp is a ringing endorsement. Hey man, how's that game? It's crisp. <laughs> well, the graphics are crisp. <laughs> That game, that, that game's so crisp, man! <laughs> so crisp. Mm. It's crisp. Mm. It's like, it's like just snapping into a carrot out of the fridge. <laughs> it's crisp. <laughs> I don't know. I like like my uh, my avatar <laughs> and, and mustache. Is your name '80s Racer? I think yeah, it's only choice that you have. Surely you can change it. I don't think for, so. For some reason, like, the, the way that picture is cropped, like, I imagine the rest of him looking like Hagar. Yeah, oh yeah, that's exactly. 
That is exactly what I thought about. The rest of him probably does not look like Hagar. Yeah. But I, my, like my to, Hagar. I like to think it is. So I don't think there's a way to change it. Um, Very small team. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Oh, maybe here we go. Yeah, that map looks very oh, much like me, though. Like, it has, like, the stars and the different races you can choose. Yeah. I don't know. You, know, you just never know what you might find on the eShop when there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's 2,000 things on sale right now. Yeah, I mean, people, <laughs> you know, people people accuse the, the eShop of... Uh, you know, being full of junk, and it is, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you what know, like, I, I, uh, you know, it was so fun. You know, you know what we should do? Oh, look, it does have an outrun, outrun mode. Look at that. You know what? You know what would be a great stream for you to do? I mean, I guess I could do it too, because there's probably enough stuff I haven't done, but like, uh, you know, Doc Dragon on the backloggery, he always likes to claim for his stream directorship. He likes to claim it as the last stream of the year. Uh huh. And um, last year, he had me download a bunch of demos right. from the East. Like, he had like three specifically that he wanted me to download. But otherwise, it's just like download like just a ton of demos on the eShop. And like, let's just see what kind of crap you find. Yeah. But there uh, were a couple of like legitimate, like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, um, maybe that, that, that does sound like something I would, would have a fun time with. Yeah, there's like so many. Is that how you like, discovered just... that Arietta of Spirits? Yeah. So that, that well, there's a physical version of that on sale or going up well, for sale. Well, I know. Like that was actually, like I remembered so you, you linked me to that Inspector Waffles game, right? Yeah. It was on Red Art Games. Yeah. They've yeah. actually got, they've got a lot of games. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I They had a, well, like, and, a lot of games for like 50% off. And I... But, but yeah, I mean, like, they've, they've just got a lot of games in general, and they seem to be like the actual... <laughs> look at that change from... They seem to be the actual publisher because they appear on the front end of, you know, their games. Oh, that transition. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, how else are you going to do it? <laughs> exactly. yeah, it? You just do what our end does and just like falls, goes behind the horizon. Comes Back up well, like else. in uh, in Famicom 3D Hot Rally, like the screen just like turns black, like uh. during branches. Um, but um, or the background turns black. That, I don't um, know, and anyways, that might be preferable so, with it to like what so happened I, here. Um, <laughs> I remembered like when I when I went this when you showed me that Red Art Games like. I saw that Arietta of Spirits was on there. I was like, oh, like I saw a demo for that on the eShop. Like I should try that. Mm -hmm. It seems really neat. Like it's got beautiful sprite art. It's, you know, you know, another shameless Zelda clone that seems like a really good one. Um, you know, the demo is not very long, but you know, it was, it was enough to make me want to buy the physical copy, and actually, the physical copy came, um, but it was after I'd already recorded footage for the episode. I mean, oh, it's, wait, it's physical copy of what? Arietta. Oh, I, I, I thought it was up for pre-order. No, no, like I, I don't think they have a long pre-order. Well, I pre-ordered it. Uh, hmm. Huh? No, I, I ordered it like. Not long after I ordered that Inspector Waffles game, and uh, which is a great game title. I, I that was the main reason I bought that because yeah. it's just like, well, it looks like Police Quest, so that's good. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, Bug Fables. I, I I was that. Did you get that unlimited run? Yeah, I heard it was like um, Paper like, Mario. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it was pretty good, but I just I uh, I decided to, to skip over it. But, um, 
Yeah. So, but that was how that is. Like, I was like, oh, I remember seeing that on the demos list. But like you can actually discover some interesting things there. Like there's this game that I've been dying for a uh, for a physical copy of that this I play on that stream. It's not in the video. It's, it's Jet Cave Adventure. <laughs> you're you're a cave man with a jetpack. Oh well, I mean, <laughs> and it it's like it's actually pretty good. Uh, and it got an Xbox version. I'm not sure if it ever got a PS4 version, and it's it's pretty good. And uh, like I I really want to get it, but I'd love for there to be a physical copy of Jet Cave Adventure. And uh, unfortunately, I'm still waiting uh, for that to exist. But um, uh, I, you know, another thing I discovered there was DYA Games, and their their sprite art is just like. So 1995 Super Nintendo, like you wouldn't believe. It. Like more so than uh, than Fox and Force. Oh, way more so. Like hmm. it, like once you, when you see what their games look like, like some of their games do, ha like they cheat a little bit with like the lighting effects and stuff, you know. But like the actual sprite and background design. When you see it, you're like, yes, this is the colors used on Super Nintendo. This is the level of detail that was typically in like a Super Nintendo sprite. Um, uh, like when you see it, you, you like, it's kind of like, oh yeah, like all of these games that claim to be 16-bit games, like they're really they really look closer to like something that would have been on Saturn or PlayStation than Super Nintendo, you yeah. know? Um, but like their art style, like it looks like a, you know, it looks like hidden gem Super Famicom games that never got localized is what their games look like. And I, I've only bought two of them. I bought Bot Vice and uh, right. Evil Tomorrow. I, I mostly bought Evil Tonight because there's no demo of it, and it looks really good. And it, it, it seems really good. It seems tough from the little bit I played of it. Um, but, uh, like, I just, I really wanted to try them with the Super Nintendo controller. Um, so they are in the episode. But I, I think people will be impressed when they see those games. And I discovered them through that stream of just <laughs> downloading, like, everything you could on... Uh, from the eShop. So, I mean, you'd be surprised. There's some interesting games. Have you ever, have you ever tried a, a there's a demo for a game, you know, is there? I, 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 I basically might... haven't tried any demos in a long time. Yeah. I feel like there might be a physical copy of this. Oh gosh. What's it called? Oh, what's it called? Um, I don't know. There was one that was really interesting. Um, Whipsy. Which is what I'm playing <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, what was it? It was the, the art style was actually not dissimilar from this. Can anyone in the chat think of what was what this game is? There's this game where you are are basically a Goomba. And I feel like there might be a physical copy of it, and I do want to get it because the demo was actually pretty cool. Um, you, you like, you, you're basically the Goomba equivalent and a platformer and like, like there's like the Mario esque hero, like kind of ahead of you I don't and know. like all, and like you like kind of try to be the hero instead, except <laughs> he automatically moves back and forth. So like all you can do is jump, you just, like and when you hit a wall, you go the other way, just like you know a Goomba. So b basically, you're a Goomba, but you've been blessed with the ability to jump. Oh, <laughs> that's that's kind of a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like you, 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 so it's basically like imagine a Goomba walking back and forth, uh, you know, constantly. You know, except you can control the Goomba and you can make him jump. So he can actually, like, get through levels. 
Yagumba. Oh, what's it called? Um, Whipsy. <laughs> it's not Whipsy. <laughs> uh, Switch game where you play as a Goomba. Let's see if this brings it up. This is going to be another one I'm going to put in is in the last section that I'm doing is uh, La, Mul La Mulana. One and two. Ah, that, that, that seems, th those games seem very deep and I'm afraid of them. I have them though. Oh gosh, what's this game called? Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. <laughs> oh, I meant to try that. Like, there's so many like things that I see here that I feel Indie like I should. Where you play as a Goomba. That's one thing I'm going to put in this last last segment is the uh, is Gunman Clive. I've heard good things about that I think ah uh, it's called Wonderling like Underling but Wonderling interesting no oh, oh there's okay there is okay this is type one. Oh, this this has a really cool art style yeah, it looks like it's going to be a jump, so and uh, no, that, that's right. That would be right for the NES. This, this feels like an NES controller game. Yeah. Yep. This is, a, this is on 3DS, I think, on the eShop. And then. Really? Yeah. This is always on sale. This, I'm pretty sure I, this was like two bucks. Pretty sure there there has been a physical of this. I don't know if it's no. That, there there is it's not as far as I know. Really? Yeah. Who who made this? I think it was made by one guy. You shoot those ducks and they turn into a piece of cake. Yeah, it was out on the, on the 3DS like 10 years ago. It's 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 a fairly old game, but these are the uh, the HD versions of it. I feel like I saw a physical of Wonderland at some point, but it's not coming up. Hmm, maybe not. But it seemed like an interesting game. Go go to the eShop and download the demo for Wonderland. Okay. That might have been that might have been an interesting one to try on uh, try on the episode, but I didn't. I mean, you just shoot the ducks or geese yeah. or whatever they are. I mean, it's a simple game, and the music is is very quiet, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's, it's not. I mean, like it, it basically looks like it's it's Mega Man. Yeah. Your jump, your jump looks a little floaty, though. Yeah, you totally are. It's totally pretty floaty. Like it, it doesn't look as quick and snappy as Mega Man, but it, it's, it definitely it's, looks like that's what they're going for. Then he even responds like Mega Man. Yeah, the music is is real quiet. Like it, like just the style of it, or like it's just turned down too low. Uh, both. Yeah, you know, it's just like a little acoustic guitar just plucking away with some whistling. I like that they, you, if you restore your health, it's just like little pieces of birthday cake with a candle in it. I, it's it's a simple game, but there's something about it. It's, it's got a cool look to it. I'll probably put this in the last segment because 
So there's so many games in this, in the in the video, and Tri's like done with all of his parts. And I have to do my last, I'm so, last segment. I'm so done, I'm so done, that I even took the time to make an ending skit. <laughs> and I, I'm very envious, but my last segment is, uh, I'd probably be further along if I didn't have to install a new toilet yesterday, or this weekend. <laughs> uh, but the last last segment, I just decided to do it as like kind of a lightning round where I move through things like pretty quickly. And I think people are going to be like, I wish you just did this for the whole video. <laughs> just did it this style for the whole video. Well, you know, I mean, there's there's always people who just like don't want any information like any any extraneous information about anything like you know like on the final fantasy 14 digital foundry video you know there were people who were like were like why don't you just get to the point you don't have to tell us the whole history of the game and it's like well the history of the game like i was presenting the history of the technology of the game which started like with that Dim that tech demo at the Xbox 360 conference, mm -hmm. like, like that was the tech not technological history of the game and the failed beginnings of the game. You know, why was it rebuilt? Because of how it was built in the first place was not very efficient. Yeah. You know, like some people just don't want anything, but like, you know, I've seen comments on other Digital Foundry videos. It's like, oh, they, they don't want to hear anything about it, but but the frame rate and the resolution. Yeah. You don't want to know anything else. Like, just get to the point. Uh, I mean, I didn't install. I, I changed a toilet. I replaced one toilet with another one. And, uh, and my wife put a new tile floor, like new... Floor, floor tiling in well, I did that um, but yeah this video someone was asking how long this video is going to be uh, it's 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 likely going to be over two hours long <laughs> really close to two hours on the nose probably yeah like my, my, my everything I have created for the episode totals to about one 61 hour. minutes. Do you think yours is going to be even longer than that? Yeah, that's what I think. I, See, I, I never, I never. My first imagine. segment is 15. My second one is, is 13. My, uh, third one is 17. Or no, it might, no, it's 15. So, you know, like the chances of it being, you know, over, two hours are probably pretty high. Yeah. And, and it wasn't like we were like, we had thought back and forth, like, like, Oh, should we just like make it split into two? Um, I think that it will probably do better than the 30 day music video. Cause that was two hours, but, uh, that was just like a casual, that, that was more of a conversation. This is like, yeah. This is the the whole title is going to be like I think the the title of it of it saying like 120 plus Switch games played with the Nintendo Switch Online controller, like I think that that is a eye catching uh, title and will get people curious. It's, it, I I said before I said it's going to be uh, it's going to do really well or it's going to be a complete disaster and I like it doesn't really matter what what happens. All, all I know is that the controller videos released at this time of the year have generally done very well for us. That's true. That's true. But. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be out this week. Like. Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. At the, yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, depending on how much like how much editing do you need to do on your on camera parts? Because like the way I wrote mine, like I needed to do quite a bit of editing. Uh, inserting not much. I shouldn't really uh, have much to do. It's just well, aside from the opening and closing. 
Right. It shouldn't be much. But like you've already, you know, you've already got so much B roll that you can use on this because yeah. I saved it for you. So exactly, 120 games in 120 minutes. I mean, that, that makes sense. Some of them go a little bit longer than a minute. Some of them are 30 seconds. But there's yeah. a lot of games in it. Some are less than 30 seconds. Yes, exactly. There's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that either of us expected it to be this gigantic. It's just that we kind of got... Oh, but it's just like there's so away. many interesting games to try with these controllers. And I feel like, I feel like people don't really think like too much about like the all of the possibilities here and it, yeah honestly it's 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 going to be a good reference piece for people like like yeah. what could i do with these controllers you know right so, exactly look for that next week and we'll or this, this we'll, coming week this week what it's, it's this week Oh, well, this week. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sunday, Monday, whatever day the week starts on. It's, mm-hmm. it's you're going you're going to see this within the next three ish days. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that is the that's the goal, and uh, I think that's going to do it. It's eleven thirty. Yeah, all all of the Switch Online controllers, including the six button Mega Drive one, no Famicom controller. But, you know, the only difference with that is that player two doesn't have start and select. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Whatever. I mean, well, I thought about like, oh, just like a real no, no, no GameCube controller. Even though cause that doesn't really count. For what we're trying to do. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see if, if people are receptive to this video or if it's going to be something like, oh, two hours of these guys. <laughs> you know, so we'll I, I was I was saying in our discord earlier, like, you know, too bad we're not as funny as Tim Rogers. I know. <laughs> not that we're trying to be, but it's it's I think that it's been kind of a good uh experience for me because i've really had a trouble writing for the last couple of years and this was a kind of a good way to get me back into a groove where i've been like working on like writing it every day and getting up and yeah, working you on have it. To write a lot right well the thing is is you got to come up with a lot of different ways to say these buttons are mapped to this <laughs> you know what i mean like what, what? I, I, you got to go up with a lot of different ways to say the same thing over and over again. I did a search through the document one time for how many times the phrase tiny R and L buttons was used. <laughs> oh, really? I, I mean, I think I said it a couple of times. My, I would like to see a, do a, a document search for the, the word mappable. <laughs> right. That's the one. That's like, yeah. that's the big one. I think. I mean, should I look at it? I could bring it up right now and see how many times the word <laughs> mappable is is in this script. I'll, I'll do that real quick. Well, because I, I was I, I was reading a little bit of your script. I saw tiny R and L buttons, <laughs> <laughs> and I like I say that like constantly. In my they're like they're like t- little little T Rex arm, like uh, they're, they're the T Rex arm equivalent of shoulder buttons. <laughs> How about mapping? Okay, the word like the the word mapping is in it eighteen times. Well, that's not that bad. What about mapped? Mapped is in it fifteen. Ooh, pretty close. Map map is in it sixty five times. What about uh? What about remap? Remap mm-hmm. is in it twenty four times. <laughs> 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 you know what? You know I was like doing. Uh, searches for like different ways. Like I was, I made heavy use of th- thesaurus.com throughout this. Uh, Video is not out tomorrow. It'll be out the next couple of days. It's going to be. Uh, yeah, I, I still have to finish my my last segment and shoot my on camera stuff, and that is is fine. How many times is is tiny? 
eyes and GBA SP R and L button. Tiny, behind. tiny shoulders like, only like, in it twice. Like Joy-Con, Joy-Con shoulder button tiny. Like you know the yeah. ones that buttons that are on the rails. Because don't forget, I, I think a lot of people forget that the NES controllers are Joy Cons. Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of people who have, who like are aware of these controllers but never bought them, or like when they see the video. They're going to realize you can actually do a lot more things with these controllers than they thought. Because I think a lot of people who never bought them don't know that there's R and L buttons on the NES controllers. There's ZR and ZL buttons on the Super Nintendo controllers. Yeah. There's a mode button, which is ZR, on the three button Genesis controller. Yeah. And the six button, obviously. Which gives you a, a, an additional button. But the thing is, and usually kind of you know, like the most annoying thing about the Genesis pad is I wish that mode button was just select. God, I wish it was just the minus button. That would that would fix so much stuff. Yeah, but I think there's also a lot of cases where. Like, you know, that like Arietta of, uh, of Spirits is a, is a good, good example where you can actually like by default the menu is on select but you can put it on zr and that like saves that game's compatibility with um with that game with that controller wait what wait wait are are you at a spirit oh okay like, okay i see right default, right but the menu is on select, but a lot of games don't let you remap the menu. Right. But that right. one does. Okay. Yeah. yeah you yeah. put it on ZR. Um, I get it. I get it. But yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of games actually where, where plus and minus do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it it's not an issue in, in the, those cases, or it might just bring up like a, you know, a quick save menu or something like that. But, right. You know, I probably wouldn't even use anyway. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes you got to make like compromises. You know, I have a whole section on like collections of, of old games. And can you use these controllers to play these games? Like the old games, man, I, how much is Mega Man Legacy? <laughs> you're, th- you're thinking about it now. It's yeah, I mean, like I mean, I'd be like, curious to see how much the uh, the Switch version is, and is it unless it's digital only? I don't think it is. But yeah, I mean, getting that uh, collection and it was like, as good as I was thinking. I mean, you can play seven with the NES con- controller. There's no, re- I mean, there's no reason not to be able to use it. A double pack of legacy collection one and two on switch oh i bet you and i bet you one is is oh one might be a download code yeah legacy two is digital only in the u.s uh legacy two has a japanese physical well here's this has a weird rating icon on it uh it's i just i think just think it's interesting that Basically, I mean, you can play one through ten, but you can't you can't play eleven. You you can play eleven, but you got to be willing to give up a lot. And if you're going to use those tiny little those tiny shoulder buttons <laughs> for uh, your speed and power gear, like that's just no fun. Uh, I I shot a quick shot of me trying to play eleven with the NES controller. And I was like going crazy. We like to like when you're going crazy and just like doing stupid stuff with a controller, like really intensely using it. We we start calling it game sacking. We're just like you know trying to play a game in the worst possible way, the most intense way. Okay, the, the here it says includes a game card for Mega Man Legacy Collection and a download code for Legacy Collection Two. Might kind of be the other way around. I know, right? I because like I don't really care about Legacy Collection that one that much because I'll just play it on NES anyway. I'll play those games on NES anyway. Legacy yeah. Collection Two is much more interesting. Yeah, 
You should see it's a Japanese version. Is a Japanese version have English? Let me, let me go to Amazon. I'm going to look on Amazon.jp and see. Is it? Is it? Is it there? It'd be. Is it? Is it called Rockman Collection? Rockman Collection Switch. Uh. Ooh. Kind of expensive. All right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not seeing a lot come up. But it's like a it's like a combo pack as well. It's eight thousand yen. So eighty bucks. Yeah, right. roughly. Um. All right. Well, let's we'll talk about it. I just realized I gotta. I have to. Oh gosh! Yeah, it's getting light. Yeah. And I have to handle everything in the morning because my wife has an appointment at 7.45 in the morning. Anyways, I think that's going to do it. Uh, thanks to everybody who donated and everybody who uh, hung out for the long haul tonight. And I hope everyone has a good week. Indeed. And, uh, Look for this video in the in the coming days. It's yep. it's going to be ridiculous. Get some long. popcorn. Set aside some time. Yeah, or just just put it on the background because it just moves so quick. They just you know you might you might not have time to like watch it all. It's okay to watch it in little bits and pieces, and it, it's it's set up in a way you could watch you could t theoretically just watch it at like fifteen minutes at a time because we alternate back and forth like. Really, every 15 minutes. I want to try to make a really good chapter listing for it, too, but that's going to take some work. <laughs> yeah. You should put every single game on the chapter list. No, no. I'm going to do groupings <laughs> for sure. And they, they are organized. Like, there's sort of some themes. Yeah. Although, you know, there's some stuff in my first section that could go in my, in my third, but that's all right. I, I will tell you that it starts off with Sonic Mania. It's a, it's a big one to start with, I think. No. Yeah. Anyways, I hope everyone has a good night and a good week. And take care. Good night. Good night.